to the Carbine Club Stakes, Mr Gately at Ramwick, that Reloaded is your Ramwick best. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you look, he's uh, obviously um, comes through some of those elite three-year-old races. Look, as a reference, a brilliant ride. Nations last out and Kubrick gets back and on top was one of the first out from Power Skiing. Grand Piano's pretty handy on the inside of promotions and the favourite Reloaded's taking an inside run, advancing its position. Back to third last, Tri Nations, followed by Bottega and Kubrick now is taken back to last. Quietly ridden at the rear would be the best part at 12 lengths last now. 8.50 metres out down the side and on top, hacking along in the lead by two and a half on Power Scheme. A gap of four lengths further back to Grand Piano on the outside of Reloaded. Further back to Promotions, Tri Nations, Bottega and Kubrick are still the last one. So on top, so got the field pretty well strung out. Coming back to them a bit now at the 600 metres. By a length and a half on Power Scheme, Grand Piano taking closer order on the outside of Reloaded, who's hemmed away on the inside as they come around the turn. And two lengths further back to Promotions on Ton swings in front by two lengths on Power Scheme. Reloaders looking for the inside run now. Grand Pianos pulling out. Promotions pulling out. Bumped into Bottega at the 250 on Tons giving a great sight. The favourite reloaded struggling on Ton two lengths clear from Grand Piano. Bottega on the outside on Ton in front. Bottega's the danger. It's Bottega going after on Ton on Ton the inside of Bottega and on Ton held on on Ton went at a head on the line to Bottega. With Power Scheme third, then Grand Piano. Reloaded, laboured in the straight. Further back to Tri Nations from Kubrick. And Promotions dropped out to finish at the rear of the field. Number seven on Todd wins the Carbine Club as he often does. Timmy Clark rating it to a nicety in front. Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bod, haven't they had a few great weeks? Stakes at Ramwick on day one of the Star Championships. This was on Taunt. Yeah, look, uh, what a powerful win. He did it both ends. It's a typical tough Tullock Lodge type of horse here. He, he would have a, you know, the 1800 metre win back to a mile and he used it to his strengths here, make him, making them chase him. And a bit of an upset, but uh, it could be a progressive type of stayer. I'm a bit of a fan of Batiga. Um, he's loaded with talent, but I just think he's still learning and floating in his races. If, he, if the penny ever drops with him, he's, go, he's going to make the grade. And, and Power Scheme did work chasing, and I thought he stuck on well, reloaded. Yeah, I, I know he was back in distance, but he showed no desire there at all. I don't know. Um, maybe a gelding operation for him. Yeah, just from that, uh, Nash Willard did state that he thought that that was the reason he um, did not appreciate being dropped back in distance and also uh, they vetted him and there was nothing wrong with him. So mm. maybe there are a few excuses. He had a, had a pretty tough preparation as well. Yeah, Kubrick's hopeless in as well. Yeah, Kubrick's hopeless in the wet. He yeah. He's hopeless in it. Four tab Adrian Knox, 2,000 metres, group three for the three-year-old fillies mounting out. Brought to you by Harvey Norman, shop with confidence, need advice, they're there to help. This has a $7 chance. Yeah, she's had a bit of a wrap on her, uh, Colette, since she burst away with that first win at Newcastle. It was six lengths. Obviously, a, a much worse. The gates are back now, and they're off and racing. And Rathvilly missed jump, jump quite well off the inside gate. Donna Chiara's pushing forward, looking for the lead. Soradere's up, Contessa's up, Reddy's girl, and Dorothy Voz the deeper is cutting across the face of the field. And Dorothy Voz is going to take the lead in the early stages and draw out a couple of lengths in front. Quintessa has her head in second on the outside of Soradere, and Reddy's girl takes a sit now in fourth, getting cover. On the outside of Donna Chiara. Further back then to Rathfilly Miss on the inside of Colette and Paradise and stick them up the last one. They've got 800 metres to run and Dorothy Vos shows the way and even splits out by a length and a half to Eliza Carolina. Then Quintessa third, Soradere under plenty of pressure. Reddy's girl got going. Donna Tiara's flat to the boards. Paradise starts a run. Colette's poking through the middle, looking for the gaps now. All held up for running him here, Colette. Well back in the field. Betcha flying's about second last and bumped around the turn. Dorothy of Oz and Quintessa. They're broken clear inside the 350. Four lengths clear from Reddy's girl. Now Colette goes back towards the inside. She's about five or six off the leaders. Quintessa goes for home. Colette changed course and she's giving.
doing serious chase. Quintessa in front, but Colette's got her, and Colette charges to the lead. Toffee Tongue Betcha flying home into the minors, but Colette's roaring clear in the Adrian Knox. A big win from Toffee Tongue. Quintessa third, Betcha flying fourth. Stick him up, got home well. Nice Oaks trial there, followed then by Reddy's girl, a satin rain on the inside. Then came Cosmic Hayes, Parody did a tough. Gap back to Reddy's girl, Donna Chiara. Eliza Carolina did too much work. Dorothy Voss dropped out. Rathfilly miss. And Maya Nebula was last. How quickly it can happen for these staying three-year-old fillies. She won her maiden in a class one on the 8th of February at a next start a benchmark 64 at Kembla and now her third win and she is going to go into the Oaks with full steam ahead. Number three, Colin. End up into a $3 favourite now for the Oaks next week. Yeah, and uh, why shouldn't she? So this was her moment. She had to stand up, up in class here, and she did, and she did it um, look, looking the goods as well. She got held up there for a while, but you've got to love the way she moted. She's obviously looking a real Oaks prospect now. Um, back to the dry, if it's a dry track on the Oaks day, I don't know. Uh, but, jeez, uh, she savages the line there. I think she's still got upside toffee tongue. Nice staying type. Quintessa, gee, she made an early move, and she had to be a sitting shot late so I thought she was very brave there betcha flying was okay but how good is she Lizzie how do you how good is she yeah she's very good and if she gets the same conditions for the Oaks then she's going to be very hard to beat there's no doubt about that uh, lovely she's nothing of her she's very light and lean and doesn't carry a great deal of condition but you generally find stayers are that type of physical build so she looks as though it was the first time I had a look at her I wasn't overly impressed by how she looked but I was very impressed by the win. What's the story with all these jockeys? Asked, uh, challenged, I believe, Tommy Berry, and then they wrote again and challenged each one of them. So basically, their whole jockey room have shaved their head, and it's in support of the frontline workers. Yeah, they just wanted to um, show their support, so that's what they've done. And I think a few rugby players have well, done that as well. So. Okay. Chairman's quality over 2,600 metres and this Manny Yard brought to you by Harvey Norman. Shop on an eight there to race number four of nine from Werribee. There's the scene at Randwick. Let's have a look at what's happening on the trade. At tab first, Carraf is $5. Into four sixty back to five. Very solid. Young Star seven fifty into six back out to seven. Gayatri is nine dollars into seven fifty. Angel of Truth is twelve dollars into eight dollars. And it's been a garlic chief dinner. A double figures in the market with blinkers reapplied today. They're all set and the game Gates are back now, they're off. Once again, Yogi's been very sluggish out of the gates. He'll settle right out the back. Other than that, we've got to think it over away well. Very deep out, House of Cardio being sent forward and Carith right there with Fair Light and Young Star in the leading clump. Angel of True beaten for speed, back into about sixth position. Boss looking to get in at this stage. The Chosen One's holding a spot. And over on the inside, Gaelic Chieftain. So Angel of Truth's caught a bit deep early. Second half of the field is Mirage Dancer, Rahin House on the fence. For the back to all too soon, three wide from Gayatri. And Ali Chieftain, a length and a half to the chosen one, still travelling very strongly. A length clear from Rahin House, Mirage Dancer on the running line. Two after Yogi Gayatri and all too soon. Still about 15 lengths off the front runner. And it's Think It Over with the 53 on its back, leading by a half length to House of Cartier. Two further back to Angel of Truth, being felt for a long way from home. Then came Fair Light being felt for. Then came Young Star. Carra pulls out three wide, trying to improve. Gaelic Chieftain under the pump, back on the rails from Rahin House. The chosen one gets going as they travel to the turn and think it over. Still full of running coming around the turn. Jay Ford tries to steal it here. Open a margin. Three lengths on House of Cartier. Carafe under the pump giving chase. Then Angel of Truth. Raheen House sticks on. And Mirage Dancers getting into the race. Well wide out. It's think it over coming back to the field. And Carafe moved up strongly. Raheen House runs on. And then came Mirage Dancer. Carafe in front of the 150. Raheen House draws level. Raheen Raheen House puts its head in front now and starts to draw clear for Australian bloodstock. Raheen House by a link to Carriff. Third there, Mirage Dancer and Garlic Chieftain got going when it was all over. Further back to Angel of Truth. Not a bad run under the circumstances. From the chosen one, Yogi beat many home. House of Cartier, Young Star, Think It Over dropped out. Gayatri, all too soon, never a factor. And Fairlight was beaten a long way out. 
Raheen House wins its first in Australia. It's been officially 911 days since the horse won at Ascot in the UK, but a winner today, Raheen House, and once it gets out to this 26 and beyond, it looks a real stay. A Raheen House who beats Cariff was standing by for the numbers to go up. Hugh Bowman and Chris after the win of Raheen House in the Chairman's and find out if he is indeed pressing on to the two mile Sydney Cup in the Star Championships. Let's go to the Chairman's quality, a lead up to the Sydney Cup. Raheen House raced into calculations for next week's Cup. Yeah, a good staying test there as they crawled home. It was tough work, but uh, it's his first win in a long time. But he, like I said, he, he, he outstayed them and sets himself up to run well in the Sydney Cup. Kariff looked all over a winner. He looked the winner every stage of this race. He was in a beautiful spot. He pounced at the right time, but just beaten by strongest player on the day. Um, Mirage Dancer was OK. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him on a drier track. Gallic Chieftain was well set up. He ran well. Yet Yogi, he's, um, he's just staring in the barrier and then catching the eye running on hard late in his races but I don't know what to think about him. The other big run there was Angel of Truth to do what he did there. He was wide, he was chasing and he, he, he stuck on quite well also and he was fancy yesterday but not much went right but hard race to assess as far as the Sydney Cup's concerned. Yeah and a lot of horses as I said that was the, probably the race that really showed it was evident a lot of horses weren't handling that track at all. No. Big races now, four Group 1s in a row, and we start with the two-year-olds in the English Sires, over 1,400 metres. This Manson. What an outstanding effort to do what he's done. You know, the skyline straight to the slipper, straight to the size here. His third start, he's well drawn. You know, he's, he's testing 1,400 metres for him here today, but I don't think... Uh... Number two, David Eustace. Well, talk about toughness. He's uh, stood the test of time all the way through this prep. He's stuck on well on the slipper after a wide run. Impressive Pago Pago prior at this, uh, and he's got form at this track. So I don't know, just interested in the yard report, just to see if he's got another peak performance left in him. Yeah, look, I don't think he's gone backwards, Ronnie. I wouldn't say you need... ...than most. Mid-race uh, sectionals there in the slipper were good. Um, yeah, I'm really respecting him. I mean, he just held a couple of these two-year-olds off for these later races, and this is one of them. Yeah, well... Dollars. Size, the first of four Group 1s on day one of the championships. And let's start with you, Gator. Mama Ragan was very good in the golden slipper. Yep. yep. And we're ready now for the first of our Group 1s, the English size, 1,400 metres, and they're off, and Prague jumped well. So did Cultural Amnesia being sent for, but there's plenty really pushing forward at this point. It's Cultural Amnesia just in front. Prague is there with it. Bartley in the white hat goes to third, followed by Glenn Fittick, and Larimer Street drops into fourth in the early stages. They're followed further back then in a pretty wide position to uh, uh, Pioneer River. Up on the outside of Eamon, Mama Reagan, the favourite, is back worse than mid field in the pink jacket just being steadied there. Two further back to Ole Kirk who's taken a spot down on the rails. Firing up badly back in the field is Mission River and uh, back last of all is King's Legacy. Dismissal is third last. Cultural Amnesia shows the way. Out by three quarters to Prague and the pace looks to be good. A couple off to Glenn Fittick from Bartley the outsider. Further back to Pioneer River in the yellow hat. Followed by Aim back on the rails. Larimer Street tucked in between them. Boy, Mama Reagan's got shuffled back and pulling to the outside but would be the best part of eight off the lead. Cultural Amnesia swings in front of Prague is making a real race of it now and Prague went up to head off Cultural Amnesia. Five lengths away to King's Legacy running on. Then came Aim. Ole Kirk gives away a big start. Six or seven off the Mama Reagan is finishing well now but Prague is three lengths clear. King's Legacy is really starting to surge. King's Legacy a length away. Draws level with Prague. King's Legacy wins the English size. Strong finish. Finish. Got up to beat Prague and Mama Reagan home to third just in front of Ole Kirk. Get back to aim. Then came Glenn Fiddick. Further back to Pioneer River from Mission River in the Red Hat from Larimer Street. Then came dismissal. Cultural amnesia drifted right out and so did Bartley. King's Legacy. What a finish to our first Group 1 of the day. King's Legacy, number four, ridden by Hugh Bowman for Peter and Paul Snowden. It gives Peter and Paul together their third win in this race. Uh, Peter had won uh, four. It's been a great race for the Snowdens. King's Legacy overpowering Prague. Hugh Bowman for Peter and Paul Snowden, and that horse is coming back right now. 
Paul Snowden, congratulations. Another win. This has been a great race to you and your dad. Yeah, for sure. Um, very pleasing, obviously, on so many levels. It was an expensive yearly. Um, you know, and now he's obviously gone on and he's a Group 1 winner. But just the fact that... Um, we in the space of six years. And what a beautiful ride by Bowman as well. He drew out a bit, he, he stayed patient, he rode the inside, he, he got out of all that pressure early. And gee, I, uh, I think he's got a good future this horse. He may have been big odds, but there's no fluke in this performance. He's a, a real prospect. I love the way he pins his ears back late here, savages the line. He's still early in his preparation. He's got the champagne stakes at his mercy uh, with more improvement to come. Prague was outstanding, doing all all that donkey work, taking over, being a, shit, a sitting shot late there. And um, I was highly critical of Nashville Rurilla's ride on Mama Ragan, uh, but in retrospect, looking at the replay, it just he just didn't get a break at all. Nothing went right. Then he got he got a bump on the turn there. His he, his effort. Uh, you could make a case that he should have won the race, uh, considering this the circumstances that didn't go in his favour there. Ole Kirk was was okay. Aim wants a dry track, but I, in saying making excuses for second and third there, I still think the winner is a, a potentially top class colt. Yeah, he ran, he won convincingly in Brisbane second up last preparation and it was he look he looked ready to go he's got as we were talking about peak performances you said has Prague got a peak performance in him and yes he has another performance but he didn't have that peak performance that you've got a horse uh, like King's Legacy would have in him but I do know Mama Reagan will head towards the Champagne I think really? that he had that okay. direction as long as he pulls up well and um, Prague well, King's Legacy a four dollar favorite now for the Champagne stakes in front of uh, Mama Reagan and Prague and Ole Kirk and away game that's the Champagne stakes coming up in one by King's Legacy in the size to give Hugh Bowman his fourth win in the race in six years and currently both legs of the two-year-old Triple Crown after winning the slipper on Farn. And we move now to the Blue Riband, the Bentley Australian Derby, over 2,400 metres for the three-year-olds. Another group one. And this mounting out is brought... He's jumping on the bit, ready to go there. He's asserted his superiority, getting to 2,000 metres last time. He was ridden closer that day. Whether well, this is the, a tricky situation... In the finish here. The Queenslander, number five, Eric the Eel. Nashua Willow rides for Stuart Kendrick. Yeah, good form. Um, in good form, winning two of his past three. We know he stays really well. Then before a mile and a half race. Murray Baker's trying to win his fifth derby here in Sydney. Quick thinker is the horse. He trains in partnership with Andrew Forsman, Opie Bosson with the ride. Well, I think they'd be happy hearing these jockeys saying this track's really testing, this track's really testing, these horses are really finding it tough because that's what this, this that's his best chance here. He backs up from last week where he was tough, he's a grinder, and that gives him a chance to measure up to the... Second of the Group 1's, the Bentley Australian Derby, which features Brass, your best bet all day, Castel Vecchio. Castel Vecchio is our top selection, bouncing off his uh, Roseville Guineas victory. It was uh, quite dominant there I thought ready for a dispatch in the 2020 Australian Derby and the gates clang back now. They're off and racing. And Eric the Eel wasn't great off the blocks. He's going to settle back last. Diasonic quick thinker. And Castel Vecchio sent forward by McDonald. Sherwood Forest going forward. And warning as well. And Sacramento. And Skador. My goodness, have a look at this. There's about eight of them contesting the lead going out of the straight. And Sacramento is going to have more muster than all of them. And Sacramento leads with Quick Thinker put up on the speed, goes to second. Followed then by Diasonic behind them. Skador one off. Warnings caught three wide. Castel Vecchio drops back now. And McDonald's been able to get him in. One off the fence on the outside as Zabrowski is keen. Further back to Sherwood Forest. Couldn't find a spot in. Three wide on the outside of Shadow Hero. Then chains of honor and Eric the Eel is the last one over the mile crossing now and Sacra Hero is the length and a half behind and Eric the Eel is the last one so it's Sacramento in front of the 1200 metres, Sherwood Forest is doing plenty of chasing, goes up to second now, warning back to third, looking for a bit of a breather, he's done his fair share of work then came Diasonic, a half the outside to Quick Thinker, further back to Skador, just shading Zabrowski then came Castel Vecchio Chains of Honour, Shadow Hero and Eric the Eel will be 12 off
last and last of all. So it's Sacramento in front. At the bottom of the rating shows the way and Adam Hieronymus quickens the speed a long way from home. At the 800 metres, Sacramento two and a half clear to Sherwood Forest. Warning, starting to improve now, going to a clear third from Diasonic. Further back to Quick Thinker at the 600 metres from Skador Zabrowski. Castel Vecchio being felt for from Chains of Honour. Eric the Eel and Shadow Hero. Sacramento's coming back to them pretty quickly. A neck in front to Sherwood Forest. Quick Thinker gets going. Looping the field and Zabrowski takes a rails run. At the 400 metres, Quick Thinker's gone a long way from home. Zabrowski's giving chase the inside. They beat off Sacramento. Eric the Eel's coming with a good run. It's Quick Thinker and Zabrowski at the furlong. Quick Thinker ahead in front to Zabrowski. A length off to Eric the Eel closing in. It's Quick Thinker. Zabrowski head and head. A great finish in the derby. Quick Thinker just in front from Zabrowski. Quick Thinker holds on. There's five for Murray Baker. Quick Thinker a half head to Zabrowski. Eric the Eel ran a blinder in third. M a massive gap back in the field of the rest. Sacramento and Chains of Honour. Then came Shadow Hero from Warning. Further back to Sherwood Forest Cador. Castel Vecchio has been beaten a long way. Diasonic as well. He's the king of the derby, Murray Baker, that's for sure. He's in elite company now. There's only one man in front of him, and he may never catch him, that is, TJ Smith, who's won nine. But he joins Bart Cummings and Tom Payton with five apiece. And uh, Andrew Forsman, who trades in partnership with Murray, he gets his second. Quick Thinker and Zabrowski, they put on a great show in that last little bit. Eric the Eel was joining in, and he's run a bottler to run third. But it's Quick Thinker. Good, five derbies. It's an incredible rate of success. Yeah, it's a, ph a phenomenal effort and uh, just thrilled from uh, OTI too. They've been great clients of my father's and uh, very grateful to them. But I know Andrew and Murray, they haven't had the best of seasons, so they've been hungry to do well here. Uh, they're keen to get a lot, a lot of new horses in the stable and really have a good go for next season. So I think they'll be thrilled. Uh, of course, Murray, they'll just be disappointed they're not here as well. But he's been uh, a pretty laid-back customer. I was, I was confident that he was the fittest horse in the race and... Uh, as it was to work out that way. So how's it work? Murray's at home in isolation, the horse is with you at Warwick Farm. Of course, you've trained with your dad for a long time as well, so you know uh, the, the the things he's got in place, but how does it work with, with your dad and you on either side of the Tasman? Uh, well, look, let's be honest, Greg. We might as well get it out yeah, in the open. Get it out, get it out let's straight get it up. Out. We, we know uh, they improve. Murray and Andrew's horses improve links when they stay at Warwick Farm. Uh, so we'll just get it out there straight. Um, but no, it's, look, we keep them in contact. And, uh, look. and he was tough in the end, just too tough for them. He was, yeah. And, um, Murray Baker's a genius to get his horses ready for this race. And, um, rang me yesterday morning, said his horse is rock hard fit and he ran a huge race. Yeah, he's obviously a horse that has got a, a huge potential going forward, staying potential uh, every day of the week. What were you thinking during the run? Because a bit of toing and froing all the time. Um, to be honest, he, he pulled my arms out the whole race. He, he didn't come off of it till we got to about the half mile. And he, he, was, he was hard work and I, I thought maybe he might have done too much in the running, but... Um, that Murray Baker Fitness kicked in. How does it feel? To Thinker becomes the fifth horse in a row to win the Tullock Derby Double. Incredible, isn't it? Um, yeah, he, he, we an eventful derby too because they all went forward. There was a lot of moves, the uh, toing and froing, and this horse was part of the action. So I must say, I think it showed up yesterday with the testing track. You know, to, now it's easy after the race, but one, two, three there, all on a backup, all on a backup. And the horses with the break between runs, uh, they suffered the consequences there. Uh, they were miles back, but what a very, very tough horse this fellow is. He, he's. Um, um, you know, and those five wins by, by Murray, I think in the, they're in the last 12 years as well. Uh, so, look, um, what can we say? I think Zabrowski will be a much better horse in the spring. He's got a, a lovely staying future there. Uh, Eric the Eel, he just got put off balance in the turn there when he ran into Castle Vecchio and uh, it may have, you know, should have probably made it interesting. Shadow Hero, he's obviously a dry tracker. What do we want to say about Castle Vecchio? Obviously, maybe the wrong decision to push the button early, but he 
I don't think we'll see him at a mile and a half again, and I don't think we'll see him on a heavy track again. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. But interestingly, with those three horses, like you said, you said it was they had that tough nut run a week before, but also they they all seem to enjoy that type of going as well. So that's what we keep going back to. A lot of horses yesterday we were watching and they were just dropping out of the race at, you know, the 400 metre mark and you would have expected them to find a little bit more. And a lot of horses in the stewards report were saying they lost their action um, just with the track. They just felt like they didn't enjoy the going. So even though it was better than what we've been up against at Rose Hill, it was definitely very testing and it, it was favourable to those horses that preferred the wet going. Yep. And I must say, even though the track was... Of things here before before we leave the derby. Firstly, Bjorn Baker, who looks like he's just come. Here he was. Here he was in the, um, well, in isolation in the betting ring on his own with all these mates. <laughs> I love the lead. Okay, Lizzie, oh. <laughs> now tell us what was going through your mind. The best lineup in a TJ Smith is in the theatre of the horse, ready to go for our feature sprint of the Star Championships. Race number eight, the tab TJ Smith, wait for age group one over 1,200. Our manning yard is brought to you by Hans McDonald, Chris Waller. Well, it's a month and a trial win since impressive in the ch in the challenge stakes there. Barrier one again here. He should be able to take advantage for uh, of that. Look, we know he's hit and miss at 1,200, but there's no doubting his credentials on wet going. Yeah, no doubt. Tommy Berry Rock. See much better run than it appears on paper. Greg has prepared him up beautifully for a peak performance here today. He looks great. He's here. Anthony Friedman trains. Tim Clark rides. Yeah, look, he's also a month since first up where he just found the 1,000 metres too short. He was all, That was always going to be the case. Beautiful trial since. This horse is ready to explode today, but... Peter and Paul Snowden. Yeah, similar prep to the other big guns here with the challenge run and in that trial since. His record needs no introduction and he'll just put himself on speed and fight for his life again. Yeah, beautifully turned. Very tough when finding the front last week. Very fit racehorse. But and on this day last year, and look what he's done since. Hugh Bowman, James Cummings. Yeah, probably not suited up kicking kicking up from barrier one leading last start. His previous new market win was absolutely superb. He gets a beautiful sit off them here and he's going to look to win it when he comes out at the... 3-9-1 and they're out on the track. Three minutes 45 away, set Werribee. So uh, Helvetian will go off the last time this race. Uh, that's their main objective here. The big, big improver is exceedance on and, uh, and looks. I think he he's uh, stood out and just a matter of his mind on things. We'll find it. Gates are back now, and they're off and racing. And Vega Days aggressively ridden out from the wide draw. White Moss jump well, loving Gabby as well from Red Zeller. And Nature Strippers there on the inside, and he's starting to muster improving. Parada drops into a nice position on the outside of In Her Time, followed by Tafane. Santa and Elaine on the fence trekking between them. Bivouac got back to second last, and last of all is Exceedance. Nature Strips pretty keen now. He's a real control freak, and he wants the front. He took it away from Vega Days. Red Zell being pushed along to keep up with them coming to the turn. White Moss in fourth, followed by In Her Time, Loving Gabby. Further back to Parada. Satter at a lane on the fence. Has four behind coming around the turn. Tafane trekking exceedance. And Bivouac will have to be good to win from there. Into the straight and Nature Strip tries to slit them. He's got Red Zell done. Followed then by In Her Time, White Moss. Santa and a lane's about six or seven off them. Bivouac as well, but he's running on. But it's Nature Strip well clear at the 150 from Red Zell. Parada charging at the end, but Nature Strip, he's a force of nature today. That's his fourth group one. Brilliant. Santa and Elaine grabs second just in front of Red Zell and Parada. Then came Tafane. Bivouac was next. A gap back to Exceedance, followed by In Her Time tracking from White Moss. Well back loving Gabby. And Vega Days was last in in the TJ of 2020.
What a sprinter. What a sprinter. He has demolished a world-class field. He has given no other horse in that race a look in. Look at the quality behind him and look at the margin he puts on these horses. This big chestnut, Nature Strip, wins for Chris Waller and James McDonald. It's their first TJ Smith victory. The margin will be two on the line. Santa is poking his nose out to grab second and he will get that. We'll stand by for third track here today but he makes his own luck and boy oh boy he, he, he's just a ripper sprinter when he turns up like that there's no horse in the world who can beat him and any of the top sprinters around in the world they're there they're out on the track one nature strip three Santa Ana Lane four Red Zill two Parata that's the numbers across the line number 10 to fact it is up 111.18 on this rain affected track well Chris Waller has uh, scored his first victory in the TJ Smith with such a talent Chris he just when you're, when you're training him uh, especially on a great field of sprinters the best sprinters I would say around the world uh, assembled here today at Ramwick and yeah, we're very grateful to be um, still racing safely and um, doing it all response. And gee, from the sort of the 600 metre mark to the 300 metre mark, you could see they're all just struggling to stay with him. And he can still maintain it for 1,200 metres. So, wow, what a what a great horse. And uh... of like you, either love him or you hate him. He's a bit like Marmite, but he's obviously got this amazing ability. But what is it when he switches on? He switches on. How can you explain it? Yeah, it's it's, it's hard to explain because we, we were so confident going to Melbourne that day and we thought a thousand metres up the straight he would just jump run and, and win but as it turned out he, he backfired on us and he hasn't looked back, looked back since he's been up in Sydney and he's just a gem. You see how quiet he is. He's, I think he just likes a bit of racing. He, once he gets deeper into his prep he loves stable life with the wallace sit there as quiet as a church mouse basically. It's um, as everyone knows, the first furlong is his key to either winning or not. But he's getting to a stage where even if when he is pressured, he's coming back that length until I signal him to go. So he's just getting better and better, and um, he's a gem to be a part of. And how was the confidence? This, there is no horse in the world who can beat Nature Strip. Well, it's speed, you know, it's, it, you know it, speed, early speed is a big thing in racing and this horse, he doesn't need the late speed because he can crack them, he can crack them between the 800 and the 600 or the 600 and the 400, he doesn't have to crack them the last 200 because when he lets go and runs his 10 second furlongs, it gets the opposition off the bit and it's a great asset to have and and uh, that, that's two super wins in a row now, um, he's, uh, he's certainly matured, he's come of age and he, I, I look, I can see he loves it wet and, and maybe the, the, the other sprinters can get closer to him on a drier track, but boy, isn't he a, a, an absolute star? He is. I, I thought there was a few good runs in behind. I think Red Zell has to have a, a special mention considering, you know, he's he ran the race of his life. He does enjoy the wet going, so that would have helped his chances. I thought Santa and Elaine was excellent as well because he is much better on top of the ground, and I do think that if you were to get a drier track, it would make it a lot more interesting than it was yesterday, and obviously Pierre Rata, Bivouac, they all hit the line quite nicely. A um, couple of other horses in behind them were disappointing, of course. Um, loving Gabby, there was no uh, reason that um, they just said she didn't really enjoy that track. Um, Exceedance, he's just he's not the not the same horse at this no. stage, unfortunately. Um, and Tafane also uh, hit the line quite nicely. She was outstanding, Tafane. She's uh, uh, to do what she did there, wide chasing home a hot speed like that. I, I, I'd wait for age. Oh, she's very, very much underrated. And I was listening to Peter's. A decision will be made later on on what form the Everest will take. It may not be run in its uh, mid-October uh, date. It may, may be run in December. Who knows? We'll wait and see what Racing New South Wales has in store. But the market has Nature Strip, the clear favourite. And there's the market for the Everest. The all-age stuff for Nature Strip. Santa Ana Lane is a $4 favourite in front of Parada, who's going there at four fifty. You've got Bivouac at six and Dreamforce who missed the Doncaster to 
be set for the all aged is a to the yard now for the star Doncaster mile over 1600 metres of course the group won 20 runners this mounting yard brought to you by 20 one is Melody Bell the 10 time group one winner Opie Boss and Jamie Richards oh, what a fantastic Kiwi mare she is she, well she might not be any sun, no sunlight but who is uh, she's a ch champion mare in her own right with those 10 group ones in the bag held up should have finished close to last start soft tracks a huge plus for her here and I think she's figured I don't know about him on a heavy, but you have to forgive last week missing the start, finding the wrong lane. Could surprise. Wet yes, track suits. He could surprise. He uh, could definitely bounce back. He's been very much forward in condition throughout this whole preparation. So even his first run, I thought he wasn't too far off the mark. He looks to me as though he's maintaining his condition and he's... 19, Brandon Berg. Glenn Boss, John Sargent. Well, informed three-year-olds usually run well. They're hard to beat. Good draw. Gets the Glenn Boss seal of approval. Uh, mapping well. And I thought he was short enough in the market, but uh, the, he's, he's a bit... Trade for the star, Doncaster Mile. Melody Bell, 5.50 out to 6. Back into 5.50. Brandon Berg, 6.50 50 out to 8, back to 750. Shared ambition, 950 into $8.50. Rest are a double figure odds, and of them, there's a little nibble for Homesman, $23 into $18. And there are others to firm there as well. Three year olds, best roughy, Mr. Quickie for me, 12, 9, 1, and 8. Go wide here, um, 550. <laughs> And the gates are back. They're off and racing. Night's Watch taken back with Natoya. And jumping very well was Quacker Jack as usual. And Prince Hawa has given an aggressive ride out of the gate. Imaging strides up on the outside going to third. Brandenburg Super Seth there with Conte Patero. Holmes from now very deep pushing forward together with Best of Days between them. Now further back to Melody Bell appears. She's in a three-wide position early stages. On the outside of Mr. Seawolf, Yulong Prince. And in that clump of uh, runners there is Kingsville Dream and the Olive Hat. Further back then to Colding, followed by Mr. Quickie. Back towards the inside is Shared Ambition in the Black Hat, followed by Tully. Well back Cascadian from Star of the Seas, Natoya. And Night's Watch is the last one. They go towards the 800 metres. Quacker Jack being joined by Holmes from the outside. A length clear from Imaging. Best of days, fourth. Then Super Seth, Prince for Waz. Well positioned. Conte Patero the outside. Further back in the orange blinkers to Melody Bell. The New Zealand champ gets going. Followed by Yulong Prince, then Brandenburg, Mr. Seawolf. Just behind them, then is Kingsville Dream as they come up to the turn. And Colding heads the rest, coming around the turn. Quacker Jack just in front from Imaging and moved up to join it now. Followed by Yulong Prince getting a rails runner. Two further back to Super Set, Brandenburg. And down the outside is Melody Bell getting past Conte Patero. Yulong Prince went up the fence. Melody Bell wait out with Brandenburg. And here comes Natoya. Natoya down the outside. Swoops to the front in the Doncaster from Brandenburg. Star of the Seas getting through. Natoya cleans them up in the Doncaster. Natoya beats Star of the Seas and Brandenburg. Then Melody Bell, followed by Kingswell Dream. Close up Cascadian from Mr. Quickie. Super Seth Knight's watch. Further back to Shared Ambition. Uh, then came Colding from Tally. Mr. Seawolf, a big gap back to Imaging Quacker Jack. Prince for Waz Homesman. And best of days, Jimmy Innes and Wendy Roach have taken out the prize Doncaster handicap. Yes, it's a first for both. The Group 1 win for both Wendy Roach and James Innes. Their first of their career. And this mare, Natoya, has come sweeping home down the outside to win her Group 1 saddlecloth number 18. Star of the Seas over on the inside. Brandenburg splits them. What a moment for this young boy. And this lady standing next to me who I'm about to speak to, uh, he looks to be overcome with emotion, Duff. James Innes, quite visibly now, what a moment. Oh, so he should be, and he should be so proud of himself. He's a lightweight rider, he's taken his opportunity, and this mare has been low-flying with sectionals this preparation. A brave effort from Star of the Seas, but it's all about uh, the win. Uh, no ups. First group one success. Uh, I tell you what, I'd really thank Deanne Pena because I got her to waste a ride today and they wouldn't let her on. I'm just so emotional. This mare is such a sod. I just 
tell you what, all week I couldn't ride her. She was just I just freshened her. I did a 200 meter sprint. She bit the strap on the head. He had to get stitches. I can't believe it. I told John he would win. I told the kids that he would win. Um, I told uh, my friend who's stuck in Singapore was stuck in Dubai for two weeks because his wife's pregnant, couldn't come because of um, she. They thought she had the coronavirus and she's just pregnant. The poor thing. I've told everyone that she would win today and she's won. She's I don't know won. what I'm going to do because all the restaurants are shut. <laughs> <laughs> we normally stop illegally at the Doncaster and get beers, so I don't think we can do that either. No, you can't do that today, Wendy. No, yeah. Parks of the course for getting her there, and I think that the barrier attendant actually backed her because he jumped out of the car and chased her all the way. I said, I don't know what. I really thank the boys. I tell you what, and I think she does too. She's going to get pizza tonight. I can tell you. Oh. The, ho the horse eats pizza. Yeah, she eats supreme pizza with Mexican, with capsicum sauce. Yeah. <laughs> And Ginger's not here today. He normally goes up to the members and gets his chicken schnitzel, and she normally has that. Chicken schnitzel as well. Oh, she's everything. Like, and in Melbourne, she got barred because off the off the greenies and the animal libs because we drank beer after the race. So she'll get at least that. Well, I think we better stop there then. Uh, <laughs> Wendy, congratulations. Race, and you were able to perform at that level. Amazing performance. Congratulations. Ah, uh, look, thank you very much. It's very surreal. Um, still hasn't sunken in, and I don't think it will for a little while, but. Look, Wendy, Wendy said to my manager through the week, oh, I've only declared this horse once before and it was when it won first up with Hugh and the other time was today. Um, so full credit to her and her team and also my manager, he had to chase pretty hard to get me on. <laughs> Did you ever think that you'd hear that? Those words, 80 people in front of a crowd of 80 people, a, a mare that ate chicken schnitzel and drank beer. Never. 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 Yeah, but incredible. <laughs> Amazing performance all by all. Giving Wendy Roach her first Group 1 and uh, this young man, James Innes Jr., his first Group 1. Uh, coincidentally, James Innes Sr., he ran second in a Doncaster on Artie Mary behind Pharaoh in 95. His son went one better. Yeah, he did. And, uh, well, have a look at her here. Uh, she just explodes on the scene. She... She's a mare that we know that can run incredible sectionals and, you know, she was slow out, she had to circle the field and to do what she did, it was just an amazing, you, you can't really make too many excuses really for the beaten brigade. Uh, she, she, she's a, she's such a quirky uh, mare, isn't she, Lizzie? Yeah, she is very quirky. She take, has taken a long time to sort of enhance that quirkiness and be able to be a lot more settled, you know, uh, in the parade going to the gates. I know that she was hard work going to the gates yesterday, but I remember that win that uh, she was able to put forward at Ranwick on that absolutely, you know, bottomless track one day. And I guess yesterday, when you're looking back through all the replays and you're looking back through a lot of the horses that were raced, it, the track was very testing for a lot of horses but she relished those conditions and um, she proved and she loves that type of going mm. um, of the beaten brigade um, obviously star of the seas I think the ride probably deserved a better fate uh, Sam Clippenden's ride on that horse when you, you know, analyze the replays were absolutely it was absolutely outstanding uh, the ride on that horse um, a few of the other horses there um, Melody Bell uh, her performance with the top weight four and five deep throughout this race without cover, I think she deserves a special mention there as well. It, look, um, Conte Patero stuck on well, Brandon Berg was another great ride from Glenn Boss there and uh, of the others, well I think most of them, you could, you could Colding went much better, uh, but I think the winner really left them with no excuses. Yeah, having to go. Enjoying a slice of pizza, Duff and Lizzie. Yeah, I don't know where I had the Mexican sauce on it there. That looked more like a margarita model to me. But yeah. uh, look, she was happy enough to, to, to scoff it down there. Uh, and, uh, and she deserves it. Well, what a story. What a terrific story. One there on course yesterday. Just the sounds of what racing has become in a lockdown. <laughs> Rival jockeys very happy for James Innes and like Adam Hieronymus last week to get their first Group One win. Well, they're a close knit bunch, aren't they? And that just tells you once they. I love seeing trainers, jockeys being able to um, get their first Group Ones, their first victory, because it really is something that is when you come into racing, you always think to yourself. 
the Pinnacle is a Group One race, and a Doncaster has to be one of the you know the big ones in Sydney that you always want to win. So the fact that a homegrown Sydney boy has been able to win his first Group One in a Doncaster, I think, would mean something. Okay. Away game three ten into three back out to three twenty. Dame just. Here's another one that they like. Let's have a look at the NOP. Way game 310 into three, back out to 320. Dame to sell $6 to seven. 18. Uh, forbidden Love on the next line of betting there was 17, got to 21, is now eight. Pretty much. Away game, the favourite, and they're off and racing now, and Chianti jumped OK with Forbidden Love, and away game is right there on the bridle. Mary Valley's pushing through, and Swatch that goes forward as well. Followed by Vangelic from Dame Giselle. Deep out time is precious. Then came Gems. See you soon. Third last from Rock My Wand, and Montesira is the last one. Forbidden Love presses on here to take the lead from the Queenslander, Mary Valley. Chianti's over racing in third on the outside of away game. Then Swatch that, just hanging a little bit. It. Might be the wind upsetting it from Vangelic. Then came Dame Gisela. Further back to Felizzi. Time is precious. See you soon. Rock by one Mortisera. And Gems is dropping out of it. Coming around the home corner now on the Percy Sykes and Mary Valley ridden right out from Forbidden Love. Then came Chianti. Away game at a bumping match there. And away game has now shouldered its way into the clear. And she's going after the leaders quickly. In two strides, away game was in trouble and went to the front. Vangelic's getting an inside run with Forbidden Love in the world clear from the rest as away game gets a length clear now from Vangelic going to second see you soon late on the scene but it's away game ripping away and away game a big winner there from Vangelic see you soon third followed in by Dame Giselle and Rock Mawan late further back to a forbidden love then came for Lizzie from Montesira time is precious a good gap back to Swatch that who really didn't handle things well was laying up before the turn Mary Valley went dropped out quickly from Gems and Chianti finished back last Last. What a season she's had this filly. She's already earned over $2.3 million. She's won a listed Callaway Gal at Doomben, the Magic Millions two-year-old classic on the Gold Coast, the Group 3 Widden here at Ranwick, a second in the Golden Slipper, and now a Group 2 Percy Sykes beats Vangelic from the Waterhouse Botyard, but too good for them. Away game, Mar and Eustace. Glenn. Away game in the Percy Sykes, and let's just put her season into perspective a seven start campaign in three states a win in the callaway gal the magic millions the widden percy sykes and runner up in the slipper what a remarkable filly she is well what more can you say you know uh, how, how how do you do this with a filly like this lizzie she, she's just been masterful all the way through yeah she's had all of her runs even though she's run in every state and in every major two-year-old race she's had her runs spaced so she's had about a month in between each run and even i'd spoken to annabelle nisham she'd had a bit of time in the paddock in between each of those runs i think how they do it is because she's so good and she's got such a great nature and she wants to win but the key probably with her is that she's quite a neat compact small type and doesn't need a lot of work to get her to that point of being at her peak fitness and her racing just keeps her rock hard fit yeah well it's um you know we we say well she can lay claim to be you know one of the two-year-olds of the year obviously farnham's got the group ones uh in the bag he, he he's a silver slipper winner he's a golden slipper winner so obviously he's the testing material but there's even talk of this really might even go to Brisbane yeah well why not I suppose if she pulls up well why not go to Brisbane um, I think they I get up to race number five another championships race the Arrowfield sprint 1200 group two for three-year-olds mounting up brought to you by Harvey and um, yeah back to its own grade here with uh, the three-year-olds definitely in play on that trial alone given the ground it's by schnitzel proven on rain affected track level line out of the gates 11 11 jump well but being restored Strained. Human Nature and Splintex are going to take it up and pushing forward is Hawker Hurricane. Anna Heed is going forward into a prominent role from California Zimbol and then Cosmic Force running six, True Detective the outside. Gap back to Flit Dawn Passage and 11-11 has to be taken all the way back to last. Human Nature leads here from Splintex, California Zimbol third. Then came Anna Heed from Cosmic Force. Flick goes up the inside, Hawker Hurricane the outside. True Detective not far away. Oh, ran into a... 
no room there, True Detective. Dawn Passage gets past and 11-11's forced very deep. Coming around the turn and Human Nature leads out by two lengths on Splin Tex. Then came California Zimbola. Anahita's next. Flitter starting to pick up. She's coming with a good run. White out 11-11 and Hawker Hurricane at the 300 and Splin Tex leads by a length on Anahita. Human Nature flits getting the gap running on well. Further back to 11-11. It's Splin Tex in front of Anahita. Splin Tex a half to Anahita and then came Flit. Splin Tex still in front from Flit who's surging on the far side. Flit goes to Splin Tex. They're wide apart. It's a photo in the arrow field. The fast finishing Flit and Splin Tex hit it together. Anahita run third followed up by True Detective and Hawker Hurricane. Cosmic Force was next. Then came 11-11 from Dawn Passage. Human Nature dropped out and California Zimbo was last in. A very, very close finish here. We're going to have to rely inside. They are wide apart. Who gets the nose down? Well, you can't tell on that. That would favour maybe flip by a nose. It's at Splintex on the outside. Number three, Splintex has won it. Defeating nine, Flit. And ten, Anaheed. Three, number three, Splintex, Mark Newnham. And Robbie Dolan. One more look at it. Done. In great style by Splintex, just. Yeah, I don't think we've given this horse enough credit. I'm a bit dirty on myself. Way through. That was much better from her, wasn't it? Um, Flit, blinkers off, soft track, ridden a bit quieter, back to 1200. So they can look forward to, I don't know if there's anything left for her, but uh, look forward to the spring with her, I'd suggest. Anna Heed was okay, but she's a wet tracker. Well, that, um, I've had enough of him now. Cosmic Force, he's got us in a few times now. He was two out of five lame in his off four legs, so he does have excuses, but he's... Uh... One's about to get underway here. Race number six, they're in the yard for the Star Australian Oaks, 2,400 metres for three-year-old fillies. And this mounting out is brought to you by Harvey Norman. I'm interested in her comments on all these horses. So she did an amazing job stepping up in distance again, winning last start a Group 1. She was given last week uh, out of in a fast lead up race that was her main target I'm interested to see how she uh, how she's held a condition this week Lizzie look she's not a very uh, big or overly strong or overly robust fit to lift and let's go back to the number one saddle cloth she was late coming in here's probable from New Zealand Opie Boss and Jamie Richards world class filly she's running all the right lead ups um, obviously the wet's not ideal for her but she's learnt to get through it in stages we've had two favourites here uh, we've had uh, Colette the favourite earlier in the morning and then just before midday uh, Probabile was actually into favourite so at best odds here you could have had $3.50 Colette it's now two ninety. you could have had $4 Probabile it's now three twenty. Uh, back now they're off here in the Australian Oaks and Contrition showing no speed at all Probabile goes back with it and Whiteout Strange Charm began very quickly cutting right across the face of the field uh, she's going to lead comfortably and Shout the Bar does a bit of work to clear the pack, going to second. And Colette's right up on the speed in third. Dorothy of Oz the inside, then Toffee Tongue Quintess. And came Cosmic Hayes. Probabil gives away a big start going past the 1200. Still back last there with Contrition. So stick him up. A collar pulled the trigger a long way out. And stick him up's gone three lengths clear. Shout the Bar. Uh, Hieronymus just sits pretty at the moment, not doing any chasing. A half back to Strange Charm. This has been a real staying test here in the Oaks. Two further back to Colette from Dorothy of Oz, ridden off the speed today. Then Quintessa, Toffee, Tongue, Nudge. Further back to Satin Rain on the inside. Uh, they're uh, coming down the side of the course to Game of Thorns. Now Probabil, Boston starting to nudge away at the filly. He's trying to get her to pick up. She's three wide, grinding away at the 600 metres, but she's still 12 lengths off the lead. It's Stick'em Up, trying to steal the Oaks, coming around the turn. Three lengths clear from Strange charm. Shout the bar flat to the boards. Boss is swinging off Colette now as they turn and Nudge goes with her. It's stick him up three lengths clear but here's Colette. She quickly moves up on the outside and Colette takes the lead from Nudge and Toffee Tongue running on. Further back to Shout the bar. Probabil's not in the race today but Colette three lengths clear. Toffee Tongue sticks to the task but Colette going great guns and it's a spectacular win in the Oaks and a great ride in the process. Colette by three lengths to Toffee Tongue. Quintet
Chester got going for third, just in front of Nudge. Then stick him up from Shout the Bar, Probabile. Further back to Saturn Rain. They're finished at long intervals here. Cosmic Haze, Aspect Ratio, Contrition, a strange charm, Dorothy of Oz, and Game of Thorns. It's another big one for Bossy. That is his fourth Australian Oaks and career group one number 85. What a staying filly she is. Number four, Colette. Just ago, she might not be any big, beautiful. Nine, Colette beats Toffee Tongue and Quintessa the exact same order that they finished in the Adrian Knox here seven days ago. So the trifecta from seven days ago in the exact same order goes one, two, three. Yeah, wet track. Two group one wins. Here's his first in the Australian Oaks. He's fourth in this race, winning with his very, very good staying filly for James Cummings, Colette. Oh, and he won this race in the first 200 metres when he was aggressive. He knew he was on a fit filly on a backup, and once he found the 1-1, one, one, which I think most maps didn't expect, and, and they went out really hard the first bit of the race, then they slowed right up, then there was moves, but Bossy just found his position. He's a great staying rider, and she, one thing that she's got, this filly, at the end of a staying distance is the turn of speed, and it'll take her a long, long way. Uh, who would have thought? The same exact trifecta than the Adrian Knox uh, a week earlier. Toffee Tongue, still a maiden, uh, but showing really good staying promise. Real grinder, though. Um, and Quintessa, uh, she was good. Got held up for a little bit there before the turn. Probably was probably had enough, and on the heavy track at a mile uh, and a half was a bridge too far. Don't hold that against her. She's she's an outstanding filly. And Shout the Barb was different different style of race. Uh, she didn't get to dictate like she did at a previous start. And I thought she didn't do a bad job considering everything, that she's probably not bred to run the distance, it wasn't run the way you would liked it for her. And I, I, she only gave out the last little bit. But all honours with Colette and Glenn Boss there and obviously James Cummings the, for the placement, the timing. Whether, you know, there's lots of tall track form is just that. It's wet track form. Let's, let's see them do it on a dry track, then we can start being more enamoured. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there are horses in the yard for the Schweppes Sydney Cup here. 14 minutes out. First leg of the quaddy and the projected pool for New South Wales tab customers expected to be $1 million today. And there's your market for the Schweppes Sydney Cup. Young Rascal, the favourite at 250. And Angela Truth jump well together with Hush Rider. And they are the joint leaders in the early part. And Azuro being sent forward is going up to have a bite for the lead. But it's Hush Rider in front from Azuro. Young Rascal away. Well, boy, Marquand's got him in the ideal spot early, running third, and Angela Truth fourth. Then came Etta James. So Angela Truth a bit deep there again. Back in the field is Gallic Chief and looking to drop in. Mustajir's on the Thomas. So they've got less than 1,200 metres to run, and Hush Rider on top from a zero. Three times a winner here at the two miles. Young Rascal, the favourites, had a great run all of the way third. Then came Angela Truth being felt for. Back to where they started. Angela Truth being really revved up. So is the front runner now. So plenty of moves here at the 800 metres, followed by Moustadier on the rails. Then came Edda James, Gallic Chieftain, Saunter Boys out deep. Further back to Raheen House. Uh, then came the chosen one from Sweet Thomas, and Yogi's making hard work of it. Young Rascal's come off the fence now. Angel of Truth, the outside of Young Rascal. Hush Rider's had enough. Edda James goes into third. They're followed then by Moustadier, is carting into it well. The chosen one gets going as they race around the turn. Angel of Truth in front. Now Marquin really gets to work on Young Rascal and he's lifting the inside. Edda James runs on. Over on the inside, Raheen House from Mostadir. Young Rascal's under plenty of pressure here. It's anybody's finish. Edda James took the lead from the chosen one. Edda James a half in front of the chosen one. Then Raheen House. Edda James drifting in a bit. He's clear. It's Edda James just in front of the chosen one. And Edda James, an upset in the Sydney Cup, goes on to beat the Chosen one, Raheen House third, good gap back to the others, Mustadir and uh, Sweet Thomas in it for fourth, followed then by Angel of Truth, Young Rascal didn't see out the two miles, then came Gaelic Chieftain from Yogi, good gap back to Saunter Boy, Azuro and Hush Rider have pulled up very, very tired racehorses. 
It's Bossy's day today. Two Group 1s and two wins to Glen Boss. Number 10, Etta James, Kieran Ma and David Eustace gets the money. Yeah, and what a training performance. She's five weeks between runs here, Etta James, since running in the Auckland Cup. Uh, she's, you know, she's been a genuine mayor of her whole career, but to win a race like that, well, that's a real feather in her cap. He was good. See, he ducks in underneath. Mustard probably missed the boat there and, and the gap closed on him, but uh, it didn't help their chances. But those two stable mates bumping into each other where the other horse's momentum down the outside. Uh, bossy again, big time bossy. 10 the winner. Etta just won the Sydney Cup. Uh, he's had a he's had plenty of travel from Matt Kamani in Victoria across to the Lupton Stable in New Zealand and then back over to Kieran Maher and David Eustace. Home to New Zealand where she is owned and had a couple of runs over there in the Avondale and Auckland Cups but now with Kieran Maher and David Eustace and produces this slog fest. Yeah, an amazing win really. Um, to think that she'd had five weeks between runs leading into a slog fest like this. I know she's a strong stayer. She'd had a trial in between hand but uh, that's a pretty good effort. Um, I must say the biggest shock to me was her starting price of $14. I could have easily marked her 50 to 1 in a race like this. So someone did like her. There's no way that she stayed so solid in the market for a mare that wasn't spoken of. I know Bossy had a liking for her but uh, coming into this race and it was, was all proven correct and the old saying the market doesn't lie and a dead set didn't there. Look, he peaked on the right day, just found one better, the chosen one, um, Raheen House. Well, how would you feel if you're Australian bloodstock and you're looking at this head on uh, down the straight with these two stable mates? And, and, and mind you, they're, 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 they're out on their feet, these two horses, at the end of two mile races, and, but they, they just got buffeted and buffeted each other, the, the, the two stable mates, Mustajir and Raheen House, and it, it did not help their chances whatsoever. Yeah, that was uh, something that... This is the big one of the day. Race number eight, the Group 1 Long Jeans Queen Elizabeth Stakes. Over 2,000 metres. And we're about to have a look at the runners in the yard with Ron Doversy and Japanese. Number one, Danon Premium. James McDonald rides for Mitsumasa Nakushida. Wow, who's a pretty boy. Um, he is the highest rated horse in this race. He's got good gait speed. He positions on speed. Obviously, the gamble is this state of track has stayed heavy and the bookies want to lay him. He's getting out um, you know, $5.50 or so now. Oh, boy, he's, he's an icon. Full coat on him. It's very silky and healthy, and he's really settled. A lot of the horses that come from overseas can sometimes get a bit up and about, and they can generally not be. From the new market yard of William Haggis, number two, Adib, Tom Marquand. And he's another laid back customer. I'm surprised because this wind has really gone to a second level now. It's really blowing, but he, he showed great fight winning the Rand Vet with improvement to come. Sting out of the ground. They've got no, their prayers have been answered here. It's, we're working with a heavy track. Form's been franked at a last run. A lot to like about him. Yeah, as every... For Opie Bosson, for Jamie Richards. Yeah, look, uh, he's had a little small stone bruise, which the vets ticked off pretty quickly when they had a look at him since his last run. Jeez, he was enormous in the rider. The rider's been a great form reference. Maybe. Yeah, he was great first up in the Australian uh, Cup. He's sure to run a great race. He's not just your regimental stayer. He's got a bit of quality about him. Yeah, he has got a lot of quality about him. He's got... A, a lot of condition. And Tim Clark for Team Hawks. How good is he? How good is he? Well, well he's the new kid on the block. He's won his past four in fantastic style. Huge step up. I'm not going to say no. From Walla. Oh, Bonnie Mare with a 2,400 metre lead up. Very competitive with a day. Uh, look, soft brings her right into play here. It looks perfect. And Melody Bell, another Kiwi, Jamie Richards, Karen McAvoy. Uh, should have won the Doncaster last week after having a torrid run. More depth here, but far too good to dismiss uh, having won. Won. The one back in trip. Great race, isn't it? 4 1 2, 12 for me. Melody Bell, the Brassel best value bet. Yeah, well, let's go to says there's enough. Horse at double figure odds. I think Colding can bounce back and run very, very well today. I'm with the internationals as well. One, two, four, and twelve. Oh, geez, you can't go past him. He's he's, he's class. He's quality. 
The wet track is a concern, um, and that's probably why you're getting a little bit of a, a bit better price than you expected earlier in the week. But uh, the gates are back now, and they're off and racing. And a Dave jumped okay. Dannon Premium was quickly out. But Galo's shop showing great muster. Caught pretty deep. Galo's shop, but uh, Hieronymus is eyeing off the lead, and he's going to get there quite comfortably. Colding Handy, so is a Dave on the fence, and Van de Clare under a prominent position in the early stages. And Dannon Premium parks right behind behind in fifth. A length further back to Very Elegant is a few slots closer today and she's rallying through underneath the Japanese stallion. A further back to Melody Bell, then Tiakao Shark is going through on the fence. Master of Wine looks to be three deep. Happy Clapper gets back from Imaging and Kings will dream last at least a dozen lengths off the lead. So it's the nine-year-old Galo shop in front out by four lengths to the Melbourne Cup winner Van de Clare. The favourite of Dave in the third position. Three quarters the outside to Colding. Further back to Very Elegant is a touch keen on the inside of Dannon Premium, but she's still travelling well here. Very Elegant as this leader continues to roll up front. Master of Wines out deep, followed by Tiakao Shark, Melody Bell between them. Well back in the field then is Happy Clapper and the Kingsville Dream and Imaging of the last pair. Down the side in the Queen Elizabeth Stakes and Gallo Shop certainly making it a staying contest of the 800 metres. Three lengths clear from Val de Clare and then a Dave on the inside. Mark hasn't felt for it as yet. Two further back to Colding, then very elegant. Dannon Premium is just starting to be felt for now at the 600 metres, waiting to get to the outside. Going between runners, Tiao Kao Shark, Melody Bell is slicing through. Master of Wines getting onto the back of the Japanese horse as they turn. And a Dave makes the move now at the 400 metres. And a Dave draws clear, but here's Dannon Premium. Wow, look at him come into it, Dannon Premium. He moves up now to a Dave. This is what we've been waiting for a Dave the inside at Dannon Premium. Very elegant goes to third, but a Dave's full of running at the 100 metres. In fact, he's ripping clear now. And a big win for a Dave in the Queen Elizabeth Stakes. Very elegant got through for second in front of Dannon Premium. Great go for fourth. Master of Wine, Tiakao Shark and Melody Bell between them. A, a good gap back then to Van de Clare from Happy Clapper, then Colding, Imaging, Galo Shop and Kingsville Dream. Adib has won a race and a half. Number two, Adib, ridden by Tom Marquan, trained at Newmarket in England by William Haggis. He's travelling foreman. Harry Eustace has been with Adib on this journey here in Australia, and he has run away to score a most famous victory in the long jeans Queen Elizabeth. A slap down the shoulder from Tommy Marquan. Very elegant has got into second spot going past the Japanese Galloper Dan form, but he's in a league of his own this horse. He's in the zone, Adabe, and uh, a, a real top class performance. Yes, and why would you even contemplate going home? Why wouldn't you stay here? and give us some more of a deeb here in this country. Well, Harry Eustace, congratulations. I'm thinking he'd probably be the vulnerable one and, and young rascal would be the one that might be the one to get me out of jail. But, look, I mean, what a, what a tough, straightforward, genuine horse. Like, he just switches off, knows when to turn it on, and he's just... 200 people on course, but we don't go to the races to stare at empty grandstands. We go there to watch the marvellous performances on the track, and it didn't let us down yesterday. There were 10 great races, four Group 1A. It promised everything. We had the, the UK invasion. We had the Japanese arriving. We had the Kiwis there and the locals as well. This race did not disappoint. No, it did not. And I think uh, Tommy Markwin and Adabe's connections were very happy when the bolt of Galo Chop kept them running and didn't want to slow up. It just got into his beautiful rhythm. They obviously got the track they were pl praying for, a heavy eight. And boy, uh, we, didn't he let down that last 200 metres? Hasn't he got a fantastic sprint at the end of his races? No matter if you run slow or if you run fast, he's a complete racehorse. She's flying, uh, very elegant. Uh, 
she stamped herself obviously one of the best mayors in the country there without a doubt she's she's a, a really mature mayor now and, and doing you know doing a fantastic job she'll she'll be um, she'll be very competitive in the spring the Japanese horse well boy what a what a, what a beautiful animal he was and and as Darren said on straightening here we go you thought he was going to explode but uh, obviously I don't I think his wheels did spin a little bit there the first time on a on a gluggy track there and and he was you know fully bandaged he's on four four feet there it's not easy on heavy tracks to bandage these horses up and and get through going like that so I'm saying he left with legitimate excuses there, and I thought Master of Wine was terrific. Wide, no cover the whole way. Uh, if he's not a cups, cups prospect, I'm not here. Yeah, I agree with everything that you've said. Just on the stewards' report, Happy Clapper uh, got back to the stable and he had a little bit of blood in his nostril that Pat reported back to the stewards. So um, I guess when you look at his run, there's uh, going to be a few question marks whether he will race on, and we'll leave that to connections. But other than that, Legacy stakes over a mile for fillies and mares. We've got three in the yard, but Elise is going to go out quickly here. I would say that the jockey's going to mount up and uh, go straight out. The jockey... Prove, I feel. And here's Delectation Girl and Funstar. We'll get the last two going out, numbers 15 and 16. Yeah, Delectation Girl, ready to win. Company. And there's the favourite there. She's the only filly here. She has class on her side. Three-year-old's got a good record here and hard to hold out. Short enough, but hard to hold out, Lizzie. Exactly right. Flirting Wolf moves in. Light flashing. Start is on the stand. For Fun Star, she's pretty popular. Two ninety now into two dollars forty on the tab trade, and from the NOP two seventy, two eighty into two forty five. They're coming for the three. And they're off and racing here in the Coolmore Legacy, and Sweet Deal left well together with Positive Peace on the outside, showing her trademark early speed. Positive Peace, Spanish Reefs going through the pack, Amon Geary as well, followed then by Conte Patero further back to Noir. Sweet Deal jump well, but gets back a bit now from Invin. Gem. Then came Dan's Dan's Dance on the outside of Miss Siska. Elise's caught three wide in the field on the outside of the favourite Fun Star. Then came Natoya buried on the fence. Length and a heart to Delectation Girl and Pahuta Kawa's last of all. Abdullah takes the lead here on Damangiri and she got there pretty comfortably as well by length now on Positive Peace. Spanish Reef races in third position a half the outside to Conte Patero. Further back to Sweet Deal who hasn't been able to be, be up there in that forward role as she often is. Is. Invincible Gem out deep on the outside of Noir. Then came Miss Siska. Elise's out three deep on the outside of Dance, Dance, Dance. Then came the tour. The Red Hat is Fun Star. Well back is Bahuta Kawa as they travel up to the home turn. Amangiri leads the way from Positive Peace. Conte Patero's pulling out. Spanish Reef is hugging the rails. Then Sweet Deal. Further back to Noir. Invincible Gem and Fun Star's taking a run back towards the inside. And the toy is trying to go with her. The American Mayor Conte. Conte Patero stormed to the front of the 250. Boot off Amangiri and Positive Peace. Then Sweet Deal and Fun Star. Further back to Noir on the outside. But Conte Patero. Two lengths clear. Here comes the Philly Fun Star going to a clear second. But it's a bridge too far. Conte Patero wins the Coolmore Group 1 double. Conte Patero beat Fun Star. And Dance, Dance, Dance third. Followed by Delectation Girl and Sweet Deal. A gap back to Noir from Positive Peace. Amangiri. Then Invincible Jeff from Elise, Spanish Reef, a good long margin to Natoya, who didn't back up from Miss Siska, and the last in was Pahutakawa. What a carnival Gay and Adrian are having, and what a carnival this mare, 15. Conti Batira, what a story. She went to stud. They couldn't get her in foal. She came back to a racing career, and she's picked up two group ones. Fun star, brave. Dan's Dan's Dan. He waited here uh, this week, and she just uh, zips away and, and beats the three-year-old, uh, who seemed to have a chance there, fun star. I'll have to have in group one. Tim Clark, his third group one of the autumn, his 15th of his career. Gay and Adrian, their fourth group one of the carnival. And remarkably, Gay's now been the trainer and in association with Adrian this time. The winner of that race, that was her eighth Coolmore legacy or Queen of the Turf. It just all fell into place again.
Incredible achievement, and this mare is dead set in the zone on the wet tracks, isn't she? Uh, I think there was a query on her being effective on wet tracks at some stage of the career, but boy, um, the last three runs, including the Doncaster last week, and she's, look, Funstow's there, and she's there to, to, to come out of here, and she just holds her off easily. What more does she have to prove now that she's got a couple of group ones up the sleeve? I wouldn't think too much. Uh, there is talk of her training right through the spring and going to America and being put in foal and um, you know different hemisphere uh, so uh, obviously she might go through to the spring now and why not she's a, a mare in dashing form uh, fun star I thought she was presented to win save the ground uh, no excuses I would have thought dance 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 had conditions to suit and went much better there uh, imaging Frank Packer plate 2000 meters group three mounting and 21 into 19 dollars for the gately on topper which is relucent so a little wobble here for quick thinker for Baker Forsman the stable this imaging Frank Packer plate for the three rolls over 2000 meters Stand by for a start and racing it on Tont Jump Well off the inside from Fortress Command. Gone by, send forward, and Chuck a Luck is poking forward as well. The favourite quick think has caught pretty deep in the early stages. Fortress Command the inside along with Canaan holding a forward spot on the rails. Relucent goes forward in a four wide position. The second half of the field is Pancho from Get the Idea, then Bottega from Tri Nations, and Power Schema drop back to last. So it's on Tont and Gone by the two expected leaders, and Get the Idea is still last. They've got 600 metres to run. Ed on Todd held together by a length on Gone By is under a bit of pressure now in second from Chuck -a Luck on the inside of a loose and quick thinker. Boson hasn't moved. Boson hasn't moved as yet. Fortress command under pressure and Canaan sticks to the fence but on Todd slips nicely clear at the top of the straight. Clark hasn't fully committed on him but on Todd's five in front. Quick thinker giving chase on the outside going to second. On Todd down to the 200 is six lengths clear. Forget about Quick Thinker. It's Canane coming out of the pack. Bottega coming out of the pack. On Tons on Jelly Legs and Canane charge through the middle and Canane goes on to win the Frank Packer plate. Second between on Todd and Bottega. Chuck a luck in fourth. Quick Thinker didn't see it out. The market got it right today. Then came Power Scheme from Fortress Command Pancho. Good gap back to get the idea from Tri Nations gone by and Belusen was last. Maybe a future staying star. Canar number 12, start number four. Finishes like a shot out of a gun. And Welcome back to Doom and there's a very light spit of rain. And better things, I think. As a four-year-old, you'll see a real special horse. And you were very confident, even though you were you were reasonably far back, you were confident you would be able to reel in on Tont. Oh, well, I went, I went, and yes, that by the way, and yes, that by the way, brought up 100. Two horses we're going to have a look at also looked to have a from uh, John James McDonald, a future staying star here. No doubt. We, we saw some very good prospects at uh, Ramwick yesterday, but uh, maybe this is the number one seed. Uh, this horse, um, he's lightly raced. There's always been a huge rap on him, even from Mick Ken early on. And uh, obviously Mick's taken a break and Chris has taken this horse, taken on this horse. Jeez, a lot of trainers give Chris of horses over the years so that, that just it's a feather in his cap he, he's so well, they trust him so much with their horses and this horse obviously the he's got the South Australian Derby if he wants to go there and there, there was talk from that as you'll hear from Chris in a minute and the, he's he, you know who's to say that you know he won't win that but I think more so um, the spring he is going to be something special and even next year this horse he is he ran a, a second and a half quicker than life less ordinary overall this race uh, which is a big thing for the three-year-olds so I think we can trust the form um, that second horse in Tont or that third horse in Tont he's he's a He's a real goer as well. He makes his own luck and toughs it out. Batiga was much better in the dry, and obviously the market was right uh, with Quick Thinker there. Just couldn't freshen back on a dry track after being slogging it out on those heavy tracks for the past five weeks. Yeah, relucent one out of five lame as well from the steward. Season for Chris Waller, the winner of Canaan in the Packer Plate. The second last Group 1 of the Sydney Autumn Carnival about to come up here at Randwick. Race 5, the Mowat and Chandon Champagne Stakes. A Group 1 for the two-year-olds. 1,600 metres. King's Legacy, 270 into $2.60. Ole Kirk is 440 out to 5, back to $4.80.
untamed. 9, 9.50, nibble back. And the gates are back, they're off, and Hollyfield's blown the start. The expected leader's out the back. And Glenfiddich first into stride from Felizzi. Then came Fiera and King's Legacy's up running fourth in the early stages. Hollyfield is tearing around the outside of the field. Followed by Untamed in the white hat, clear from aim. Further back, then demand along beyond. Ole Kirk is well back, and not an option is the last one. So Glenfiddich, so does the New Zealand, and not an option. He be 12 lengths last. It's Glenfiddich in front by a length to Hollyfield. Untamed moving up on the outside. Followed by Fiera as they come to the turn. For Lizzie, the outside, two further back to King's Legacy. Then Mandalong beyond from aim. Ole Kirk, and not an option. Coming around the corner now. Glenfiddich just in front. A neck away the outside. Hollyfield being hard ridden. Untamed is moving up to third followed by Fiera, then came Felizzi and King's Legacy, he's getting to the middle of the track now, it's Glenfiddich trying to fend them off, a length off to Untamed King's Legacy gets going, and Ole Kirk down the outside, Glenfiddich still in front, King's Legacy is lifting, King's Legacy goes now to Glenfiddich, they brush but King's Legacy puts the head in front and Edge is clear, he's the Group 1 King, King's Legacy claims the size produce, champagne stakes double, just edged out Glenfiddich, Ole Kirk in the third Followed then by Untamed from Not an Option for Error. Further back to Felizzi, Mandalon beyond. Hollyfield blew it at the start and, and, uh, and Aim in the red hat was last to finish. King's Legacy, the size champagne double. Hugh Bowman wins the triple crown as a jockey. Farnan in the golden slipper and then the size champagne double with this horse. King's Legacy, an expensive yearling by Redoute's choice. Very brave, Glenn Fittick. Only a head away and really pushed the favourite, King's Legacy. And it'll be Ole Kirk in the frame. King's Legacy, Glenn Fittick, Ole Kirk and Fayera. In pain stakes. Yeah, if there was ever a, uh, a favourite that was always in control, it was this one. Everything just went beautifully for him. Uh, Glenn Finney bounded out of the barriers, and then well, obviously our, our natural leader there, Hollyfield, missed the start. Oh, Aussie Tom, you don't do that in Australia. When they missed the start and you hunt around them, it's this cardinal sin. You don't do that. Anyway, we've shipped him back home after that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Jeez, you're, you're a fickle <laughs> human being. <laughs> uh, Ole Kirk settles nicely in the run here. He, he He's a funny horse. He, he, he loomed up. And I just don't know whether he finished off at the mile, Ole Kirk. He was very... Um, he was a little bit aggressive and he also didn't sort of have his mind on the job in the yard. That would be my only negative about him. But, yeah, probably didn't finish off strongly. I guess the race really changed complexion when you lost your leader, as you said, and, and Holyfield had to go around the outside but it set it up beautifully for King's Legacy. He was able to get a perfect run in transit and, as you said, you, if you backed him or you were on him on this occasion, you would have been very, very confident because the way that Hugh Bowman ambled up around them, he knew that the only horse that he had to run down was Glenn Finnick. And, actually, I must give all honours to the leader. I thought he was a really gutsy performance. He was able to dig deep and he made him work for a stride or two, but, in the end, he was just too good. Yeah, look at him here. Bowman still has, hasn't asked the question. Then, when he does, this horse has just got that sharp turn of speed that puts them away and uh, the other horse um, am, ambles out there Glenn Finnick to eyeball him Tommy Berry brings out and I must say he did want to fight and fight hard he did so I think he's got upside the winner he's a lovely horse um, you, we could all go back and say it doesn't look a strong champagne stakes but I think he's the right article this horse he's he, 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 there's something about him he's a good type i think he's going to get better with racing he's and the champagne so one horse i really want to follow out of this race and i've probably got a little bit of a love affair with him but not an option i just think that it was it was a big task for him yesterday 1100 to a mile um i love the way that he finished off through the line and I think he's a horse to follow for the future and he's obviously going to be staying around so keep your eye out for the spring for him. Yeah, it's a big ask. With this group one, the Schweppes All Age Stakes, 1400 at Wait for Age, the Manning Yard brought to you by Harata who won this race last year with Tommy Berry on board, Greg Hickman is the trainer. Uh, what a big moment, he's been a, a great horse and uh, this is expected to be his last run before stud. Uh, today so grateful well it appears he finally gets conditions to suit a drying track first time past 1200 since winning the Stradbroke um, back in 2018 just a back marker barrier one Timmy needs to get him into the clear wind him up and uh, to produce that 
customary big sprint we know Santa's got. But beyond her, she looks absolutely fantastic. She's come on again. Here's number 11, Bivouac. Hugh Bowman, James Cummings. Yeah, whole different race this to the TJ Smith where he missed the start. He was out of contention the whole way. So beautiful draw here. Just the improver on the dry here. McDonald taking over is a, a huge plus. Better weighted today. It does have class. Yeah, he's always been a great looker all the way through this campaign. Today is no different. Super Seth in particular for James McDonald and the Freedman camp. 21 this morning on tab. Skims in $10 to $11. And they're out on the track warming up. Super Seth, Brass, 21 into $11. Yeah, I assume that the firmer conditions are going to work in his favour, Marto. He's a class act, of course, Caulfield Guineas. Uh, they don't fluke Caulfield Guineas. At the Each Way Odds paraded. No, this is a big ask for her, but this is on looks that I do it on, and she looks absolutely fantastic. Look at that coat as she goes to post. She's in great order. and She's looking for a bit of luck with him with his racing style, but keen to see him back at 1,400. Parada peaked up for his grand final in his last start. Bivouac positions up beautifully, and this mare for Tefani... Uh, she's in great form. Um, I don't know whether I pick. Racing now. And a Super Seth missed the start by a half length or so. And White Moss jumped very quickly. Together with Dream Force and for Seekers right there. And Berry's got Parada up running fourth. In front of Bivouac. Then came to Farnay and Standouts caught pretty deep early. Further back to Brandenburg. Sylvia's mother, Santa, and Elaine. He's got about four behind him early. Fierce impact. Super Seth. Two off to star of the season. Mr. Seawolf is last. So White Moss has been able to lead comfortably. Out by two lengths on for Seeker and Dreamforce takes us in third. A half the outside to Parada is very close in the runner. Two lengths further back to Bivouac on the inside of Tafana. He stand out three wide. Then came Brandenburg from Santa and Elaine, Sylvia's mother. Further back then to Super Seth on the rails as they come up to the home turn. And White Moss is free rolling in the lead at big odds. Turns two in front of for Seeker. Then Dreamforce. Parada being stoked up. Up. Tafane gets going. Bivouac travels well on the inside. 300 metres to run. White Moss coming back to Fasica. Coming hard now is Parada and Tafane the outside. Parada and Tafane hit the front together at the 250. It's Parada on the inside of Tafane. Parada, he's looking to go out a winner. Tafane's trying to spoil his party. It's Parada in front from Tafane. Oh, close. Parada and Tafane. Tafane really dived right on the peg. Not sure about third for Seeker and Super Seth. Then came Santa and Elaine from Bivouac. Further back to Brandenburg for his impact. White Moss from Star of the Seas. Mr. Seawolf. A big gap back to Sylvia's mother, Dream Force. And stand out after the wide trip was last. I don't know. Tafane has lunged at Parada and all aged. Here's the low angle Parada Tafane. The nose is oh. in sync. I think it's the outside. If that is to be Parada and that photo has confirmed the result. Tafane, number nine, Mike Moroni and Opie Boss, and we just wait for the 1-1. One, one. And then this mare who has been airborne, and this, you can't begrudge her this victory. She's competed at the top level for a past four starts now, and uh, she gets the result, and Mike Moroni does it again, um, this time with a mare, and she is a absolute beauty, Tafane. He... Loses no admirers. It could have been a fairy tale ending for Parata there, but unfortunately for his supporters, just a bob of the head there. Super Seth missed the start. Uh, for Seekers actually held on for third there, so uh, big bets when, uh, each way for her. There's some collect there, and Super Seth has. Let's hail the winner. And another Group 1 to this man, Opie Bosson. Mike Moroni wins his second all age stakes. 250. It's Parata on the inside of Tafane. Parata, he's looking to go out a winner. Tafane's trying to spoil his party. It's Parada in front from Tafane. Oh, close. Parada and Tafane. Tafane really dived right on the peg. Not sure about third for Seeker and Super. So close. Tafane getting up to beat Parada. It was, uh, it was a great finish to the carnival, guys. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, the way she stuck her head out there and, and uh, Parada looked home and hosed. I think, I think the ride on Parada deserved a better fate to, <laughs> to get the 1-1 one, one there. And he must have just felt the winner the whole way there. But that mare, uh, the way she, she dug in and had a go, she'd had no luck in her own right, really. She, she should have 
uh, figured in the finish in the new mark and as you said the couple of runs since she's been working up to this and and uh, it was a, a terrific performance from her you can't take anything away from her yeah well what can you say um, we, we've spoken about the winner there she's uh, she deserved to win a big one and she she gets the job done but well we talk about Parada you know was supposed to be well it, you know I, he's done himself no harm racing this extra season I think uh, um, that, that, that you know, they showed good courage run, running him right into his five-year-old year and I, I think he, he, he it's put more value on the horse really he's a lovely mature stallion ready to go to stud now he was uh, uh, just after the race you, you could probably just see it in Tommy and, and, and Greg's just in their face. They're, they're proud of their horse, but uh, the disappointment that must have been there, Lizzie. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, getting beaten in by a nose in any race is a disappointment, isn't it? But a couple of horses I, I just want to make a mention to, I thought for Seeker was Outstanding. enormous. Outstanding. She deserves that Group 1 placing, and who knows, that might turn into a Group 1, eventually turn into a Group 1 win one day. It was very, uh, you know, White Moss can do that. She does like to roll along, but they they went together, and she was she sustained that on pace, you know, you know, sort of that really strong on pace run. I just thought for Seeker was excellent. I, I just want to follow her wherever she goes yeah. to. And Super Seth, probably coming out on the back foot didn't help him, and I, I thought he finished off really, really well. So he looks to be back in form. Um, but where do they go, these horses? Now, I think that's nearly the end of the road for most of them. They'll probably have a break. And now, Who's your tip in the Oaks? I'm going with Toffee Tongue. Oh, JJ a moment ago talked about Nudge and Toffee Tongue. I wish it was 24. I'm really looking forward to the Australasian Oaks, which is not too far away, Camber. Still rock solid at $5. Vegas Jewel at 7 with a fair to remember. Uh, Nudge has just come down from 10 to $9.50 and Moonlight Mate is... Looking not to win. Caulfield last time weaving through. That form was franked earlier today at Sandown. Just get your thoughts on Sierra Sue, which has just been... Ready. Light flash. Sink. Toffee Tongue began beautifully along with Vegas Jewel and they head for the lead early. Not far away, Wings of Pastrami, Beauty Bolt. There's a charge from out wide. Uh, walking, flying, Betcha flying, Salika and also Sierra Sue. So a bit going on early as they head to the back with Walking, Flying and Salika. Salika shading Walker. So there's been some pace through the first half and as they head to the thousand, Moonlight Maid whipped around them and now takes over the lead in the Oaks from Salika second, Sierra Sue third, Nudges fourth on the outside of Walking Flying, then Vegas Jewel from Betcha Flying, Silent Sovereigns caught deep with Fasciano right off the track and then Wings of Pastrami, a fair to remember deep. Down on the rail, though, is the favourite, Toffee Tongue. She's spotting them seven. La Falaise pulls up alongside of her now. Then Zaydani, three and four wide from Beauty Bolt, hard ridden. Asiago's last of all. 600 metres to run in the Schweppes Oaks. And Moonlight made at the head of affairs. A neck to Sierra Sue, silent sovereign. Ficino's been deep, but it's moving up. Walking, flying Salika down on the rail. Vegas Jewel, Toffee Tongue sticking to the fence. A fair to remember gets to the outside. So too, La Falaise. Lays, walking, flying at the 300. Toffee Tongue building revs down on the fence. Moonlight made one pace. Then Salika, Silent Sovereign. A fair to remember La Falaise. Toffee Tongue reached the lead from walking, flying. Moonlight made, then Salika. And Asiago, but Toffee Tongue's clear. They're charging wider out. Toffee Tongue's got them licked in the oaks. Toffee Tongue from a photo with a fair to remember Moonlight made and La Falaise wider out. Close up wings of pastrami, walking, flying, and down near the rail, Asiago from Betcha flying, and then Salika, followed by Beauty Bolt, Vegas Jewel towards the back with Silent Sovereign, Sierra Sue, Nudge, Ficino made some headway, then petered out. Zaydani's one of the last ones in. Chris Waller wins a second Oaks here in Adelaide. Damien Thornton wins his first Group 1 in a race where he was narrowly beaten two years ago. Toffee Tongue wins her first race. She gets right up on the inside to score. After Walfordville, he was called upon by Australia's leading trainer, Chris Waller, 
and he produced a brilliant ride. Yeah, he kept his cool, didn't he? He kept his cool, he persevered, persevered. One stage on the point of the turn there, I thought, oh, uh, you're going to get held up behind a tired horse here. But he, he, he kept his nerve, and what a great thrill to ride it. And then, as Lizzie said earlier, for, for, for Chris Waller, so that opens up lightweight rides for the rest of his life now. If, if you get these lightweight, you're looking for a lightweight rider going into a Doncaster or something over the spring, he, he's in the mind now, that young man. And, uh, and Jonathan Munsey, you know, he puts a lot into these beautiful, fillies and he deserves to get a result now and again and that's a good result because she was a maiden going into it and she's a group one winner coming out of it. Moonlight Maid how, how, how tough is she? Uh, she made that early move and was still fighting at the finish a fair to remember just stays all day but it's all about the winner um, she had a bit of a tough Sydney campaign but she's come through the other end in, in fine form. She wouldn't have wanted any further. Sunlight 340 away going 360 Savitiano's still there though right there at $7 hasn't gone away Long I had 10, I'm excited, 11. Bam's on fire, so a little bit more gap, more money for sunlight. 320 and 380 now, it was 340, 360 last time we looked. Savitiano, must be Italian for I'm still here, because seven into $6.50. Liar, 11, I'm excited, 13. Bam's on five has gone out of Castle. The Tab Classic is group one at Morfordville and race number eight C Sunlight as the SOP favourite. 340, 350 into $3.30. The two-year-old away game, plenty of interest, 370 to $3.90. Sabatiano is the brassel on topper. 750 into 650. Back to seven. racing. Slow to get going was Teleplay. Away fast, Bella Fella. Sunlight began briskly. So too, Madame Rouge, Savatiano, Hummer Hummer. Away game and Birdie nearer the rail pushing forward. And they were followed then by Drifting Back. Now I am excited. Followed by uh, Bams on Fire. Very wide on the track is Liar. And so too, Beautiful Flyer. Getting right back, Spanish Whisper towards the rear. In company with Embrace Me and Everyday Lady. It's the Flying Bella Vella. 600 out. Three quarters, Savatiano. Sunlight's deep. She's going up. Away game stalks the pace. Followed by Madame Rouge. Then Hummer Hummer. I am excited. And Birdie. Teleplay. And Liar Liar will come deep from Bams on Fire. The leader, Bella Vella, at the 400 as they turn for home from Savatiano. Away game's about to shoulder into the clear. It's Bella Vella still sitting quietly. Away game starting to lift now. Savatiano. I am excited. Bams on Fire. Sunlight's dropped right out. Bella Vella kept going. Going. Away game's got a lift. Bella, Bella Vella going quickly from away game. Out wide, Liar thundering home. Bella Vella in front. Liar tries Bella Vella. Bella Vella from Liar in a terrific photo. Bam's on fire and Am Birdie for third and fourth. And they were followed by Savatiano. Then away game. I am excited. Followed by Street Icon and then Hummer Hummer Telly Play. Then came Everyday Lady, Madame Rouge, Spanish Whisper, Beautiful Flyer, Sunlight, back towards the rear in company with Embrace Me. This is an incredible result for the Will Clark and Stable. They bought this mare for $20,000. She'd gone to start, didn't get in foal. She came on an online auction. Will Clark and his client snapped her up for $20,000. She's now won six from 11 for the Stable. More importantly, she's won a Group 1 race. She's just held off Lyre to score. Bams on. With a, a mare purchased for $20,000 from an online auction after she couldn't get in foal, She's now won six from 11 starts for the stable and denied Damien Thornton his second group one winner of the day with Liar. This is Bella Vella in the Sangster. Incredible. Uh, he, he, this is a great advertisement for a stable. 22,000, I think she was online. And even when he got a flying, you know, winning those 900 metre races at Mooney Valley, the, I think she won that challenge there, the time challenge, and I, I just pegged her as a 1,000 metre horse. I think she... I, I wouldn't she a... You'd have to say, in all honesty, I know he's obviously improved her, but she struggled to win a midweek in yep. Sydney. She really did. Like, she may have come on leaps and bounds, and she obviously has after winning a Group 1, but she is, she was always speedy. She always put herself in those races. She loved Hawkesbury, and even um, those really, t you know, the Canterbury track as well, but 
she was she wasn't a, a Saturday class horse. No, but uh, she, I must say she was an informed mare going into that race. She'd uh, really been flying over short courses, so she'd had a few runs of twelve hundred prior to that, and you would have thought, nah, nah, she's just a thousand metre horse. But good luck to them. They got a big group one on the board there now, and uh, she's worth a lot more than twenty two thousand dollars. <laughs> and there's also a few of the low first of nine from Albion Park. Now to Morpheville for race nine, the DC McKay stakes over 1,100 metres coming up here. And the favourite at $4.60 comes up, Shimino. Uh, Shimino by Seamus Award, eight wins from 19 starts, a last start winner. A beat Garner to be fatly likes the five here, Behemoth, uh, the big boy by all two hardies. First up here, one public trial behind Gitra was good. Racing. Bold Star, not that quick away. Jungle Edge flew out, landed a couple of lengths in front. Quickly driving through, home of the brave, Parsifal, Shimino, Viridine, Behemoth is handy and Bold Star's picking up. Wider out, Shimino just losing or being drifted back now from Cabini and then Benz and Kenyon Wonder. Second last, last of all is Arrow Lane. The leader is the nine-year-old Jungle Edge by three quarters. Home of the brave second, Parsifal third, three deep, Bold Star on the back of the speed from Bohemoth, then Viridine, Cabini, Shimino's deep as they turn for home, then Ben's Arrow Lane and Kenyon Wonder, 400 metres to run in the McKay and Jungle Edge turned in front by a length, giving chase home of the brave, Bold Star picking up speed nearer the rail, pass a foul, here's Big Bohemoth now unwinding, Bohemoth trying to get to Jungle Edge who's got plenty still to offer, Jungle Edge from Bohemoth, Bold Star, the rest are just battling but it's Jungle Edge, you never Never too old, you're just too lazy. The nine-year-old Jungle Edge from Bohemoth. Cabini took third ahead of Bold Star, and then Viridine, a tiring home of the brave. Kenyon Wonder, Shimino, Arrow Lane bends toward the back with Parsifal, one of the last ones home. It's the 2nd of May today, James. On the 3rd of May 2015, five years ago virtually, this horse won his first race at Sapphire Coast. He won a few races there before he eventually started winning races in the city. Here he is still doing it now, nine years of age, and that's his 18th race. A week-by-week -week proposition, and that shows that he's very happy with the way the horse is. And look, he parades well. We know a lot about him. The box he's got a tick is whether he can run out a 2,500-metre race like this. This, um, I think he can. No, but concerned. And in a significant race. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, VRC Derby. And, and leaving the track after the chairman's last start, I did think to myself, I'll be on warning over Dallas Ann uh, in the Derby. But I'm just out 1st of May uh, at Flemington. He was a little bit keen even early in that jump out, I thought. So, um, look, it wasn't much of a guide as to how well he's going, the jump out. But it did show that he was... He, he tra yeah, clear favourite now, Russian Camelot. Now, look, I had him priced. I had uh, Dallas Ann 360. I had the other two Mark 490. So um, I didn't have a lot between the second and third uh, selections, warning and Russian Camelot. Into a very short price of $2.70. Just a bit of a reaction to that. Back to $2.90 because warning got out to that $5 mark and some punters has decided, yep, that's an each-way bet for nothing for us. So back to $4.60 in Dallas. Racing. Russian Camelot stepped fair. Away nicely was Sopods with the Moonlight Gambler and Dallasan rolling forward. St Arnica not far away. Rising Archie deeper out pressing on. He might eye off the lead. Moonlight Maid's gone forward and Warning's just sitting in behind the main division as they work out of the stretch. Just tracking them is St Eustace from Zaydani, rock steady, exalted ambition, and Russian Camelot eased out in the initial stages. He's caught three deep at the moment as they still shuffle and sort out their order in the exalted ambition and Russian Camelot is three deep and he's at the tail end of the field as they run to the back of the course. Hey, Dani, Russian Camelot, he's been three deep, no cover, back last for the entire journey on the outside of exalted ambition and one of the last is Rock Steady. They've gone inside the thousand now and the leader and it's Moonlight Maid pouring some pressure in now to Rising Archie a long way from home. They've moved two lengths clear. St Arnica's third on the outside of the Moonlight Gambler who's had a solid run in the race. So Pod's warning. Dallasan starting to ease out now. St Eustace letting go with his run. Russian Camelot's trying to get onto their back from Zaydani. Then Exalted Ambition and Rocksteady last of all. 
uh, going to the front, Moonlight Maiden. She dashed for home at the 400 metres. She's a couple clear, giving chase the Moonlight Gambler. Sopods, Dallasans cruising up as they come to the corner. St Eustace, Russian Camelot's getting to the outside. Moonlight Maid kicked away at the 200 metres. She's clear. Dallasan joining in. So's Warning getting a split now. And here comes Russian Camelot with a big bounding run. Dallasan laid into the fence, but he's got the lead. Russian Camelot's after him. Then Warning and Zaydani. It's in front, Russian Camelot from Dallasan, and he's king of the castle, Russian Camelot. He takes the derby from Dallasan, and Warning is third. Then Zaydani, and further back to Moonlight Maid at the head of the others from the Moonlight Gambler, then St Eustace. Rocksteady was next from Exalted Ambition, St Arnica. They were followed then by Sopods towards the back, beating one home, rising Archie is last. Phenomenal win, Russian Camelot. He uh, was out the back, he was covering ground. I don't think he was really settled out the back there either, James. And he's been able to overpower Della Sandwich. Jason Holder wrote an absolute treat for mine. Warnings run third, so the big three have run the trifecta. And the Phillies, A. Darnie, fourth. No letdowns in that race. Uh, look, Russian Camelot, he didn't settle that well past the post for the first time. So much so that he was three wide in that last trio. But he was too keen for him to be able to come back sort of half a length of length and actually get some cover. So Johnny Allen just stayed out there three wide. If down the back straight, it doesn't really matter if you don't have the cover. The wind's at your back. And he, he got a nice trail in on the back of a horse like St Eustace coming to the home turn. And look, Dallas Sam was given a great run. He peeled out. He let go quickly. But he just couldn't get a... a break on Russian Camel. He just kept improving with him and inside the final two, he's pulled away to win that. He's a he's a serious horse, isn't he? Absolutely. At his fifth race start, he wins the Group 1 tab South Australian Derby. Is that after you talk about it, guys? But no horse has ever won uh, bred in the Northern Hemisphere a derby in Australia. Yeah, I was reading a tweet from Greg Carpenter about this yesterday. It's amazing. Um, he was born on March 29, uh, this horse. So he's giving, you know, nearly 200 days <laughs> for these other three-year-olds. He's a baby. He's a baby, this horse. What a trainer this Danny O'Brien is of trainers. Uh, the Melbourne Cup winner Vow and Declare, the King of Leagrants. He, he's got another promising horse that won the Adelaide Cup and he does this with a... a, a, a he's like a foal, this horse. <laughs> he, he, he is a, maybe a deserved Melbourne Cup favourite. Um, a really, really exciting horse. He is very exciting. The fact that the, we talked about maturity earlier on in the show about horses when they get to four, and this horse is, is so far behind his contenders, and the fact that he's got so much more improvement with maturity going forward, he's absolutely so exciting. Just the manner in the way that he worked into the race as well, and he's so lightly raced early on in his career. Um, and so off a setback too. Yeah, off so a setback and gap between runs for such a young horse. But to do what he did back from back and just sweep into it, and like they were all nailed to the fence, it was it's pretty impressive. It's the horse you'd like to take back for an Epsom derby. Yeah, well, if they have one. <laughs> That's what I mean. What the season. We're building up towards the Goodwood, and uh, this is a really fascinating build up towards prize money when we consider some of the horses that are racing in Australia at the moment for Group 1 status and also for prize money. And we've got a horse who's actually racing today that's won more Group 1s in Australia than any other horse still racing. His name is Blackheart Bart. He races in Perth today. Santa Ana Lane can join him on six if he's able to win a Goodwood. Nature Strip 1 scenario in Australia. And Hutch, what about our sprint stars? There's a couple of them racing today that are right there uh, towards the top of our very greats in regards to money earners. We talk of Santa Ana Lane and Sunlight. Yeah, exactly. Um, the... And got out to $3.60, just back to $3.40. It's on his own as the favourite. Santa Ana Lane is $7.50. Now, we looked at the top of the program. Trekking was that price. It's out to $8.50. And Sunlight's holding a right. Nine, nine fifty back to nine. Order of Command is uh, at $10. Uh, we've got $12 for the inevitable. Liar, 13 And Behemoth is at 15 so up a bit from that, and his, his coat's come, uh, looks a little bit neater as well, so I think he's, he's on song. I've got him on... Holding. Sunlight's jumped over the top of Trekking, who's gone cold. Order of Command holding its price. This race has got unrivaled, I think, and we're going to see a... Whoever wins this race is going to be a genuine Group 1 contender. There's no weak links here. It's a serious race.
Shaywig. Bracing and Keelong stepped away beautifully. So too did Geetra and Jungle Legend and Birdie showing pace with also Keelong down on the rail. Little Contra Sunlight not far away. Then Order of Command followed by Trekking. Bold Stars got well back with the inevitable Zoo Tori. Liars towards the back along with Behemoth and Santa Ana Lane is last of all. Charging through and finding the lead at the 650 metres. It's Keelong by three quarters of a length on Geetra second. Uh, third placing is Jungle Edge as they sweep towards the home corner. Order of Command, Sunlight, then Amberti, Lil Contra trekking on the rail. The inevitable Zootori, seven or eight off them, along with Bold Star, Liars well back. Santa Ana Lane's getting to the outside. And Bohemoth last 400 metres to run in the Goodwood. And Keelong's belting along in the lead, but Geetra is stalking. They sprint now. Keelong goes well. Geetra goes better. He lays up to Keelong. Geetra strikes the lead from Keelong. Run Running on is Trekking. Further back, order of command. It's Geetra clear. Trekking's a big danger. Trekking's after Geelong. It's in front, Geetra. Geetra and Trekking. Trekking got up to win final stride and took the Goodwood for Godolphin. Trekking over Geetra. Liars flown. She might be third in a photo with Behemoth, Bold Star and order of command. Santa Ana Lane, then a tiring Keelong Sunlight and Birdie, the inevitable Zutori, Lil Contra, Jungle Edge photo. Trekking will get it. Yep, Trekking will get it on the outside here. He will win his second Group 1 after winning the straight break last year. Johnny Allen gets a second Group 1 at the Carnival after winning the Derby last week on Russian Camelite. It's nailed Guitra in the last bound. Liars being Group 1 placed again, running third at our Carnival and Behemoth fourth. 2, 3, 11. Carnival and Behemoth fourth. 2, 3, 11 and 9. Oh, what a race. It promised so much and it's delivered. They went... ...that uh, couldn't hold off trekking and trekking wins a Stradbroke and now a Goodwood. Yeah, and a beautiful John Allen ride there. He put him in a beautiful spot, got him into the clear at the right time and you ride right at, uh, at Izzy's second uh, group one and very well placed by uh, Godolphin. Look, I, I wouldn't take anything away from G-Char. He chased down the leader and he was a sitting shot and only, he only grabbed him in the last stride. He's a he's a really good sprinter, G-Char. Lai was very good from the back, wasn't she? And I think Bohemoth was, uh, he, he's got his foot on the till. I wonder if he could be a Stradbroke horse. You know, he's a, uh, early in his prep and he's really caught the eye a couple of times now. There's your Everest market. Well, obviously, there's your go-to horse, Nature Strip, the favourite. And uh, uh, where do we... So, um, just, just as far as uh, history buffs are concerned, Santa Ana Lay became the first horse to win the Goodwood Stradbroke double. And now, I suppose, Trekking becomes the first horse to do it the other way around, the Stradbroke and then the Goodwood. Now, I'm sure you want to... ...in race number three. As we move on to Ascot, this is the feature event. We're 90 seconds away. It's the Group 3 Amelia Park Roma Cup. Wait for age over the 1,200. What a great advertisement for WA Racing here. The field engaged. Angelic Rulers now taken over as favourite. $3.90 on the WA tab fixed market. Vega Magic, great to see him back at the races. We know the quality. He's running two Everests. And we haven't seen him since August of last year when he was down the track at... Cor and they're racing. Taxagano actually won the start from the inside. Carberry came out gently on Vega Magic and cruising over Durandell and quickly Pat got one off the fence. Vega Magic's going to roll forward, head him off as Pateman comes a angelic ruler. Carberry has sent Vega Magic to a narrow lead here at the 550 and about to cross down onto the rail. The Velvet King at his flanks running second. Back inside of those just holding them out there at the moment. Durandell dispositions only a length away running fourth. A further two flirting he urged along. Taxagano, man, Booker further back in the field. So's perfect jewel into the straight. They swing. And Durandell with a kick. Vega Magic with a fight on his hands. The Velvet King down the outside. Disposition back to the inside as Carberry goes on. Vega Magic nearing the 100. Vega Magic over on the inside. Durandell and down the outside. The Velvet King coming again. Here's a go. Vega Magic got his head in front. Vega Magic. Vega Magic just won the Roma Cup in an absolute thriller from either the Velvet King, Durandell, who was brave and Flirtini came with a wet sail late. Perfect duel behind them, Taxagano and Disposition Electric Light Man Booker, followed further back by Blackheart, Bart, Angelic Ruler and Gatting. How good is it to see him back at the races? The big chestnut, Vega Magic, he toughs it out. He's won it by about a neck on the line four for his second win. So two wins and four minors from seven outings.
hadn't won for 657 days. He ran in two Everests, formerly trained by Sean Casey before going to Hayes, Hayes and Dabney. Back with Sean and Jake Casey, a very emotional win for Connections. Vega Magic guys getting the job done. Yeah, I love this horse. Um, what a job Sean and Jake have done with him back home, all the TLC. Um, he's not a young horse and he did it tough. He did it both ends. He sat outside the lead. He eyeballed a hot speed. I thought, ah, oh, he's going to cave in the last little bit here. But he's done a good job. But he, he's a winner. He should have won an Everest. I'm still trying to get over that one. Uh, but give him a slot, I'd say. Give yeah. him a slot. <laughs> he is a marvellous horse. <laughs> I, I've, I've been in close contact with him. And he's such an imposing, big, strong, powerful animal. And, um, yeah, I, I'd love to see him back to his best. He is getting on in years. But certainly great to see him back in the winner's stall. And I echo Ronnie's thoughts. <laughs> open now. They're off and racing. Mask Crusader drawn the set has jumped out well. Spanish Dream, Moe's Crown send forward and Mask Crusader Berry wants the front there on the favourite and he finds it. Iso Rich Sedition Park right behind. Then came Spencer Cuban Riala, Angie and Super Tycoon. Mask Crusader the favourite in front by a half on Spanish Dream. Bolero Kings off the track on the outside of Sedition. Iso Rich, Moe's Crown out wide. Not even sure if Moe's got cover. He's about four or five wide on the outside of Spencer. Cuban Real trophies galore pinned away on the fence. Well back in the field, Sigalis, so they straighten up. Mask Crusader comes up the rise. Berry kidding to him at the moment. Two lengths clear from Sedition and Bolero King. Then Spanish Dream. Trophies galore the fence. Sigalis in a traffic jam, but Mask Crusader slips further in front. Sigalis gets the gap now, going into a clear second. Berry's just sitting there. Oh, you'll have to throw his commission back. Have a look at this. How much did this have on the field? Mask Crusader, one by three and a half. Berry didn't move a muscle. So Gala's second, now third. I'm not sure there. Miss Steed has gone late at Spencer, Cuban Real. And then for backers there at Mask Crusader, that's the easiest money you'll make today. And we won't see an easier winner from here on in either. One ten ninety two after being given a shaken up and then eased right down so that Tommy could just watch it unfold on the big screen over his right shoulder. 14 mask. He's too good for winter. He's too good for winter. He's uh, he's 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 gonna he's gonna be a real group class performer. I love the way he took bad luck out of the Well, uh, just have a look at the rhythm he gets in. Um, smart ride, he rode him how he was travelling. Tommy, most people thought he'd just sit behind what looked to be a couple of fast horses here, but he pinged the gates, he took bad luck out of the equation. And look at him, uh, how balanced this horse is. And he, 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 he lengthens here just with a, a little bit of a shake-up. Um, like he didn't run the time of the two-year-olds, but I don't think he was um, asked to do it, really. Uh, Sigalis, she's racing well. Um, much, how good is he? How good is he? He certainly gives you that feeling that he's very good. He looks very good when you have a look at him in the yard. I didn't know anything about him really before him. He's very strong as well, so um, he looks exciting, really exciting. Just watching him going to the... Sort of golden eagles being thrown around, Everest. Everything. Nothing's Everything. off the table. Nothing's off the table yet for, for us. Is there a pattern... Stakes run over 1,200 metres. Favourite here is Vega One at about $4.20. Kementari is here at Barry Lockwood Stables. Mark Duplessis to ride. He's got that um, girth on. The <laughs> sheep speed go. Try and tuck in just behind. He's just behind. He's got mm. a good record here. He's going to run well. Three stakes is at Group Two. Let's have a look at what's happening for you from the QAP side of things. Where Vega One is four. Out to four. Seeing Victorum was away brilliantly. Again, Kementari's missed the start. Winter Bright is going four with Victorum. Also right up there, Tambo's made in deep image coming over. Chapter and verse. Winter Bright down the side, led the way from Deep Image and Tambo's mate third. Fourth is out back Barbie. Rallying up into fifth is Freddie Foxtrot. Victorum. Vega won the outside Caesar. And then Nick and Nova, Senior Fox and Ty Zone. Second last, Kementari. And Chapter and verse at the 500. As last of all is Winter Bright. Heavily back, led by length and a half here from Deep Image and Tambo's mates over on the inside. Out back Barbie. Next one there is just in behind those. Down the outside is Vega. 
figure one, but still five lengths off Winter Bride. Winter Bride's just in front. Deep Image the outside. Tambo's mate the inside. Also coming through is Victorum. Late down the outside's Nick and Nova, but Victorum's driven through. The outside is Deep Image. In front is Victorum and Victorum. Victorum goes on to win from Nick and Nova, flashing to run second. Third, I think, Deep Image out of Outback Barbie and Photos. Tie zone, Winter Bride, Tambo's mate, Vega One, Camentari, Caesar, Freddie Foxtrot, Chapter and Verse, and Senor Fox was last of all. He is back, Victorum. And third or fourth of the time, you could tell he was going to be the one, and he's finished his race off brilliantly today. A maiden, he is uh, yet to win a race, but um, each time he's stepped out, he's covered himself with a bit of distinction. Uh, things have just got to fall into place eventually. Top. 11, 2, 17 and 1 will go. Uh, Wild Ruler, I'm sure he can improve. And the JJ Atkins, not an option at 17, being fairly, uh, well, 12 out to 18. Back. Very, very open. 4X dry JJ Atkins here. That is Tick Tock Boom. And it's a 30, it's a 34. Thing. McCrura, Rothfire both began well. Super Rad likewise. Handy as Wisdom of Water, but also Safiano, the drinks card. Isotope is going forward. Not an, op not an option over on the the inside. Then we've got Spokesman over on the inside there. Wild Ruler's going forward. A length and a half further back to TikTok Berm and Star Rosa. So Wisdom of Water and Isotope the first couple. Third is Rothfire as they swing down the side. They've got about 650 metres left to go. Fourth is Super F. Fifth is McCrura. A length and a half further back in the field of Wild Ruler. Then we've got Safiano. The drinks cart, not an option. Next one, Spokesman, TikTok Boom, Minji, Cosmic Gossip, got a kiss. Star Rosa, Thunder Mania. Second last around the home turn is Overlord. And last of all is way beyond. Just in front is Wisdom of Water. Down the outside is Rothfire. Between them is Isotope. And running home is McCrura. But Rothfire's hit the lead in the group one. Opened up a length and a half clear. Wisdom of Water can't go with Rothfire. Down the outside is McCrura. Further out to the drinks cart. But it's all Rothfire. And the thriller from Chinchilla. He's a group one winner. And Rothfire. Five Brewers won it by three. Got a kiss, gets up the run second. Third's a photo. The drinks card overlord Thundermania. Followed further back then by uh, Wild Ruler. Then McCrura. Followed by Cosmic Gossip. Star Rosa way beyond. Uh, next across the line was Safiano. Followed then by uh, TikTok Boom. Minji Isotope. Super rare. And not an option about the last one to greet the judge. All right, 113. Got a kiss on the outside, gets that third spot. Can win a group one. He's kept him going to the line, this son of Rothsay. And I know after he won his second race, Bernie, uh, Robbie Heathcote was talking about buffering and then he won again and we're hearing buffering buffering so i reckon and rightfully so this record he's only been beaten once in seven starts and there were perhaps excuses that day indeed and wow i got my best mate here oh, crying and i'm about to... <laughs> wow well, he's some horse eh? Yeah, I'm lost for words, and that's not normally me. That is certainly not you. Well, how were you feeling during the run? I like Jimmy on that. He's just been so cool and calm like the horse. I've been the nervous wreck, and he even said going out. So, yeah, he's climbed his Everest today, and note I did use that word, Everest. <laughs> it's just in, in the forefront of your mind. <clears throat> now, with this horse, Rothfire, after this outstanding performance to win the two-year-old Group 1. Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, we all sort of anticipated the drinks cart might try and take a sit, but um, when he was on the speed and setting a good speed, it really fell into the hands of Rothfire. And when Isotope ripped around him sort of at the 700, he just got that lovely drag into the race. Jimmy Byrne was, you know, still conscious that he might have pressed the button too soon. This horse was nothing short of electric uh, yesterday, and his stats are incredible. He, could, he is rated, I think, the second best two-year-old behind Farnham this season. So look at little got a kiss. She was on a seven day backup. She drew the car park. She went back to last. And obviously there are a few unlucky horses in this race, particularly Overlord, you can see getting checked just to the inside of got a kiss's heels there. So, you know, debatable, obviously, that that horse should have finished closer. But nothing would have come close to running down Rothfire.
He's very, very good. I tell you, he is very good. I, I've been waiting for him to just stamp himself in this race, and I said, well, here's your moment, and he really delivered the goods, didn't he? Um, exciting. He, he could go on and prove himself with a golden rose preparation there, and I'm, I, I wouldn't even, you know, doubt in the strap back. I want to go back just with that head on there. I, I still cannot believe there wasn't a protest fourth against third here. No one said anything, but you see the, the, the pink momentum at a very vital stage. I am, if that's not grounds for a protest, I'll give it away. Um, and I'm, I'm convinced he should have protested fourth against third, but that's take nothing away from the winner. No. He, he is an outstanding horse. And there are handicap. So let's look at the horses in the yard. Of course, it's run over 1,400 metres and our favourite is Dawn Passage. But first, last Maxi trained by James Cummings and Michael Carl. Yeah, he won with 54 last year from Barrier 8. He rises to 58 and 17 alley. But he's had a couple of uh, years mm. off during the war. But, oh, there he is over there. It's the special K. <laughs> now, he's got the white cap on, uh, carrying saddlecloth number two. I'm just going to put him in on top today for the very luckily for him. You sing on the Strab break and high tail away brilliantly. Also beginning sweetly there was over on the inside Graf and kicking up as also Bam's on fire as they endeavour to sort out their order. Victorum's going forward. Dawn Passage likewise. Um, he'll come over and just about lead here. Dawn Passage. Bam's on fires over on the inside. Up to third now. Crack me up and fourth is Exhilarate over on the inside there. Just in behind those is Graf. Victorum high tail. Next is Outback Barbie as they swing down the side. Chief Ironside, the outside. Next one there is Madame Rouge. Trekking, Kementari, deep image out three and four wide. Winter Bride, Nick and Nova. A length and a half to Rainier and Tyzone, the outside. And Vega one is last of all. So Dawn Passage, the outside. And Bam's on fire, the inside, the first couple. Third between them there is Exhilarates. Next over on the inside is Graf and Chief Ironside. And also just in behind those is Hightail in company there with Outback Barbie. But Dawn Passage has reached the lead. Down the outside is Madame Ruse running a real cheeky race. Likewise, Chief Ironside. Rainier is over on the inside. Graf runs home as well. And Ty Zone is down the outside with trekking. Madame Ruse has got the lead. There's a wall chasing. Nick and Nova's coming through. Ty Zone the outside. Madame Ruse, Ty Zone, Nick and Nova. Vega one late as well. Ty Zone. I reckon Ty Zone, the Tolga Tornado, has got up and won the strap break in photos. Nick and Nova, Madame Ruse and Vega one all up there as well. Followed by Rainier. Out back. Barbie, then Winter Bride, followed by Victorum. Back behind those we had Graf Exhilarates, High Tail, followed by Chief Ironside, Dawn Passage, Trekking, Crack Me Up, and also Deep Image, Bams on Fire, and Kementari about the last one. Tyzone coming through towards the inside. Here's Tyzone charging home down the outside. And he's got up second to, to trekking last year. Twelve months later, the little fella has got up to win his group one. They were stretched right across the trim cans for giving us a crack and, and believing in us. And he's just a star, honestly. Uh, horses don't do what he's done. He's a winning machine. And... Oh, it's, it's just, just so special. Um, That's you know. win number 17 when he wins his Group 1 Stradbroke. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> um, he has. Um, it was a, obviously a huge day uh, for the Edmonds camp. And, you know, earlier in the day, they thought of scratching this horse due to the track conditions. So the speed was an absolute cracker. Bams on fire was a bit slow away and then burst through. And there was a whole bunch of horses looking to get in behind the speed. But sectionals will tell you how fast they went in this race because there's um, Tie Zone in the orange colours, Vega 1 in the yellow. Um, Madame Rouge was back there as well. And Nick and Nova dashing through in the red colours there. They, so basically... Basically, three of those first four, in fact, four of the first five uh, over the line there came from, you know, second, third, fourth, last and last in the race. So it was a big finish. Record time to shows you how fast they went there, So which made it impossible for, for Dawn Passage. He just couldn't clear them. And that spot where you just get three quarters of a length in front outside the lead and they're running that fast, he, he, his chances were gone there. It was a lovely ride by Jason Taylor on the second from there, there, Madame Rouge, wasn't it? And... Uh, and well, whole mate there, uh, Kementari had no luck. He could well go in the black book again uh, on that performance. Classic legend. Back at the races today, Les Bridges, the trainer, Karen McAvoy rides. Yeah, he's easy in the market so far, 290 now. Um, 
We know how good, how, how promising he is. He's headed out of the one. Just to say half an hour out, uh, he is six dollars into four dollars and sixty cents. So four eighty with Tab now. It's a back now, and they're off and racing. And Jungle Edge got, began very quickly together with Snitch the outside, and they're the two leaders early. From Jonka Chorus Gate, Classic Legend just drifting back on the outside of Handle the Truth, looking to go. Old Jungle Edge is free striding into the lead. He's been well supported, leaked by a length and a half to Snitz, happy to take the sit. Two after Jonker, then Coruscate, Classic Legend deep out, followed by Passage of Time, Handle the True Southern Lad. Tactical advantage, Viradine and Care to Think is the last one. Coming around the corner, and Jungle Edge goes to the middle of the track. Snitz is right in his slipstream second, followed then by Coruscate, Classic Legend being wound up on the outside of Jonker. Inside the 250, Jungle Edge a length clear from Snitz. Classic Legend is starting to close in now. Two lengths away to Southern Lad. It's Classic Legend and Snitz going to the front. 100 out. Classic Legend Snitz. Southern Lad closing in. Classic Legend in front there on the Bob Charlie. And Classic Legend gets the money. Let the Everest negotiations begin. Classic Legend beats Southern Lad and Snitz, followed by Viradine. Then came Jungle Edge, followed by Hand of the Truth Jonker. Good. But we know what they're doing with this horse. Uh, this horse has a slot. This horse has a slot for the Everest. It hasn't been officially announced. He hasn't been put in there. But Von Ho purchased the slot for three years off the ATC. And this is his horse, Classic Legend, who returned to win the Bob Charlie Stakes yesterday at Royal Ramwick. Uh, a lovely return. Uh, he carried 60 kilos, first up for a long time, one soft trial leading into the race. Uh, gave second seven kilos to the second horse here. So I'd say encouraging, without saying getting too excited and saying, wow, what a, what a great Everest trial. Let's just reassess him. Les, Les will tread water with him now. Um, get the timing back right. He apparently loves to be in, in, in the box. So I'd just say semi-tick along for a month or two and go on a semi